Tonight on five, we have a great matchup of two teams determined to make a lot of noise come postseason. For the Chicago Bulls, it's been an up and down start. After defeating the Miami Heat in record fashion, as seen here on opening night, Chicago have had mixed results as they work to fit their new players into the Bulls system. Britain's Luol Deng has looked impressive so far and hopes to continue that against one of the best in the West. For the Dallas Mavericks, the start to this season has been horrific. After losing in the NBA Finals last year, they came out of the gate slowly, quickly losing their first four games. With starter Josh Howard out injured, MVP candidate Dirk Nowitzki knows he has to step up to lead the Dallas faithful back to the top of the standings. And in addition to the game, we'll wind up the latest action in the NBA, catch up with an old friend and meet Britain's newest addition to the league. All that ahead right now on 5. Indeed, here we are, and the game is uh, just minutes away now. It's uh, We're just behind it, so you're fundamentally getting it all here live and direct here on 5. That's the way you like it. And uh, Andre, it's an interesting time to be going to Dallas, because, of course, we've had a nice look at the Bulls, and we know what they're all about this year. Very hot, quite cold. But Dallas, it's an interesting start to a season, isn't it? Are, are they feeling the effects of, of, that, of that finals? Well, both, both teams are under pressure for different reasons. Obviously, Chicago Bulls were who they required and the big yeah. expectations. And then when you look at the Dallas Mavericks, the high expectations are the fact that they were in the, the actual championship finals yeah. last year and they blew a two-game lead. Every, and, because they, yeah, they probably goes, almost went in as favourites, didn't they? You could have argued with the way the form was going. I, I had my money on them yeah. because the way they were playing, they were playing a lot more solid than, than my Miami to that day yes. and they had a commanding 2-0 lead yep. and to actually go and lose four games straight which is unheard of in a championship final and I think that ever since they they fell off from that they still haven't recovered from it and there's still that expectation for them to get back to the finals so it's going to be interesting to see how they actually re bounce back from it they haven't had a very good start they're no. two and four right now and once again it's the high expectations and right now they're not responding to and we it. should of course forget of course that the coach is out there on his own now isn't he Avery Johnson of course he's a new man to the job but he's kind of lost his his, his back up there which with the old wise head of Don Nelson so when, when you lose when you lose, um, obviously, your mentor, yes. you, you're pretty much out there on your own. I mean, and he's done a smart thing by getting in, obviously, more experienced people to yeah. actually back him up as um, assistant coaches on his bench. But now, pretty much, he's out there on his own. He's in the line of fire, and he's got to find some way to actually rally his troops and get him moving back to the same way and, you know, scrapping hard playing tough defence yeah. and scoring points to get them back to the promised land. Absolutely right. Well, let's, uh, uh, we're going to talk about Dallas in a little bit more detail in a moment's time, see how their most recent forms are going. But first, let's start with the travelling team with Chicago. They've had a couple of games uh, since we last saw them. Let's go back to Thursday. Out to Cleveland we go as the Chicago Bulls take on the Cavaliers. Last year, LeBron and company swept all four regular season meetings with the Bulls. Early on, though, Andres Nocioni got it going. Inside, got the layup to go 2 of 15 by Nocioni, and the Bulls were down by four. But here comes LeBron and company. As Cleveland ended the first quarter on a 24-9 run, traditional three-point play for the King. And at the end of a quarter, Cleveland's up 30-18. In the second frame, LeBron cuts baseline, lays it in off the glass. This is when the Bulls went almost three minutes without scoring a point. LeBron James again, baseline, hoop, and harm. He had 19, and at halftime, Cleveland was up 52-39. Here come the Bulls. They cut the deficit to 10. Kirk Heinrich. He had 20 points and 11 assists to lead Chicago. But then LeBron gets it over to Drew Gooden. And he throws it down. Gooden had 20, and Cleveland starts to pull away. Time winding down the third frame. Danielle Marshall, the three. It falls. He had 15 at the end of three. Cleveland's up 80 to 68. In the fourth quarter, Cavs on the break. Sasha Pavlovich with the dunk and the foul. No doubt about this one. Cleveland was going to win this one easily. Anderson Varejo making a nice poster for a young fan down the road. Cleveland picks up the win, 113-294. In Chicago, where Big Ben Wallace and the Bulls look to get back on track at home. We pick it up in the third. Jamal Tinsley cuts through the lane and dishes to Al Harrington, who finishes with the reverse. Part of a 12-0 run by the Pacers. Harrington had 19 in the game. Now in the fourth, Bulls on the run. Chris Duhon up top to Luol Dang. Dang had 21 points and 12 rebounds. That cut the Pacers' lead to run. Now it's Kirk Heinrich curling into the lane, pulling up for the J. That capped the Bulls' 8-0 run and gave Chicago a one-point lead. 
later in the fourth, Danny Granger knocks down the triple. That cut the Bulls' lead to one. But the Bulls ended the game on a 12-3 run. Heinrich here knocking down the three. He had 23 in the game. Chicago goes on to win 89-80. They go uh, lose one, win one, that's the way it goes there. This is their, their situation in the centre division. They lost, of course, to Cleveland there, who's at the top at the moment with uh, five wins, two losses under their belt. Actually, we're going to be hearing directly from Chicago at halftime. Um, basketball pundit and legend, Mr. Scoop Jackson, you may have saw briefly at the start of our show there. We're going to be chatting to him at halftime to discuss Chicago Bulls and other things around the league. Uh, but basically, that's the lineup as it is at the moment. This is the division that Chicago want to get themselves out of, and of course, they want to get themselves into the game tonight with these fellas, don't they, Andre? Well, here's what's happened: is there's been a massive shakeup within the starting lineup. Up goes PJ PJ Brown, and in comes Andre Nocioni. And can you say up and down for the season that um, Ben Gordon's happened? So he's been bin for Chris Duhan. But obviously, we're going to be looking at Andre Nocioni to see what he can actually bring to the table. And I think Scott Scars is uh, reasoning behind this. He wants a little bit. More consistent scoring punch in his starting lineup, and he doesn't feel that he's getting it from the two starters that he's replaced. So in steps Andres Nocioni, who will fill that power forward spot, and he can do everything as, you know, as well as filling it from the inside. He's a good post up player, and he has great range, able to knock down consistently from the three point range. So watch for him to make put up some big numbers tonight against the Dallas Mavericks. PJ Brown's interesting. We talked about him a few weeks ago, saying what a good, a good investment to get that veteran in. But you know, if I think back of him, I've never thought of him as starting five guy anyway. Really? Oh no, no, no. I mean, when, uh, his former team last year, he, he was knocking, knocking down points, and he was playing pretty well because he yeah. can hit that th free throw line jump shot, as Luar was talking about in his interview a couple of weeks back. And that's what they wanted. They wanted somebody to actually draw the big guys away from the basket, yeah. and they also wanted somebody who could put the ball on the floor and make things happen at the basket. So far, it's been very inconsistent, yeah. and the same. Can be said of Ben Gordon, who goes yes. one minute from knocking down 30, 37 points to the next game, making one of eight from the field. Could so, be more effective as impact players then, which uh, is kind of what you need in a, in a squad system, uh, isn't uh, it? And I, and, I, and I think that he he he's you know he's still young. Yes. And he needs to find that, that consistency level. And yes, we can say Luau's found the consistency yeah, level. Like but, there isn't, yeah. but there isn't much expected of Luau. Maybe that's why yeah. he's out there just still doing his thing. Whereas they're painting Ben Gordon Start as the, the Chicago Bulls poster boy. Yes. And right now, he's not, he's not answering the call. Absolutely right. OK, then on to Dallas. Uh, recent form guide for your last two games again starting Thursday. Out to Phoenix as the Mavericks look for their first one of the season. The Suns playing without Raja Bell, who's out with a rib injury. Pick up the action in the second quarter. Leandro Barbosa drives in sky. The scoop shot draws the foul, capping a 70-4 Phoenix run. Anthony Johnson finding the big fella. Dirk Nowitzki, he could do it from every spot on the floor. Nowitzki had 25 points in the first half. Suns on the break. Sean Marion over Dirk. Take another look at that one as Marion had 21 points. This point, though, Dallas was up by two. Move to the third quarter. Suns in transition. Leandro Barbosa, the corner three. You betcha. La Barbosa had 30 points as Phoenix was up by one. Jason Terry getting it back on the perimeter from Nabitsky. That three falls. Dallas up by five. Still on the third. Terry doing the feeding, finding Nabitsky, the corner jumper. Two of 35 for Nowitzki at the end of three. Dallas up 93-85 in the final frame. Steve Nash for Phoenix. Working the perimeter, goes inside, takes it himself. That drops in for Nash, capping a 14-2 Phoenix run, tied at 95. Jer Jerry Stackhouse drives, hits the fadeaway over Marion. He had 23. Dallas up by three. Barbosa finding Amari Stoudemire. He played a season high in minutes and played well. 16 points for Amari. That cut the deficit to one. Steve Nash driving down the lane for the floater. That ties the game at 112. Nash had 20 points. After that, Dallas made two free throws. Jason Terry with the crossover pulls up for the jumper. That falls. Dallas picks up the 119 to 112 win. Up north, Dallas played Portland. The Mavs have 10 straight wins over the Trailblazers. Early on, Jerry Stackhouse with the steal, the sweet spin and the finish. Dallas led by three at the half. In the third, Dirk Nowitzki took over. He gets the kick out and drains the triple from the top of the arc. That put the Mavs up 12. Again, it's Nowitzki. 
this time doing it on the drive in the lane for the lefty finish. He had 11 in the quarter and 26 in the game. But the Blazers would come back in the fourth quarter. LaMarcus Aldridge playing in his first game this season. He gets inside and tips it home. He had 10 points in the fourth quarter. Now it's Zach Randolph working across the lane for the lefty runner. Part of a 20 to three Blazers run. Too much firepower for Dallas. Terry hits the three and the Mavs go on to win 103-96. Remember Dallas there, and incidentally in terms of Portland there, Darius Miles is going to miss the rest of the season. Um, he's going to have to have knee surgery uh, on something that's been niggling for a while. They're going to get that sorted out, probably misses the rest of the season. Now this is why Dallas are probably relatively pleased, and I'll check with uh, Dry in a second on that if he thinks this is true, <laughs> that they've got the Bulls who haven't travelled very well this year in front of them because two and four stinks. And and you really have, haven't you, Andre? You've got to get that... You know, get you know, get your, your home wins under your belt. Um, who's going to do the damage from tonight? Well, both teams are under pressure, and I feel that um, Chicago are under least pressure because Dallas haven't won at home yeah. yet. So therefore, balls might be a little bit looser. And we're looking at this this starting five here. Obviously, Dirk Nowitzki still the guy that they look to to put the pop the points, and he's answering this call. But obviously, with the injury to Josh Howard, in steps in Jerry Stackhouse. Now he's he's been a guy that's been playing particularly well. I mean, he's uh, he had 17 points in the last outing and he's just always that dependable guy that's always there to do all the dirty work and also score points excellent defensive player real strong going to the basket can hit jump shots and is good at creating shots for himself off the dribble so he gives every he brings a lot of things to the party all the intangibles that we like to talk about and they're going to depend on him but if, what's going to hurt Dallas is they can't rely on that sixth man which is Jerry Stackhouse yes. coming off the bench to give them that point so that means say somebody else is going to have to pick up the slack off the bench and similar to last week when we're looking and you've talked about in terms of Miami we're looking at a team there of clearly of experience but that means they're, they're a slightly older team aren't they there's not a lot of that youth and vigor in there is there no but they still got some pretty decent young athletic bodies out there that can actually it up, get it yeah. done whereas when you look at my Miami it's pretty yeah. much the geriatric crew in it so well you, so <laughs> you want young and athletic well let's not look at Josh Howard then have we because oh. clearly something's not right in the state of Howard because uh, this fella well just look look here I mean it's the same thing three times over and it's a bizarre way of getting injured isn't it well I mean it happens a lot but the same thing happened to him all the time. Keep stepping on people's feet and turning the same right ankle. Every time coming down awkwardly here, turning that ankle, and it's cost him. And I think when you, once you, he's one of these players. But this players, one, he's, he's open. I mean, uh, well, no, he's come down on the guy's foot, foot, but like, where's the strength, you know? Uh, uh, and it's one of these things where players, uh, there's certain players are injury prone. And he is one of them. Yeah. To have that same injury three times in the past 12 months doesn't bode well for him and, and the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, it's not that good. OK, so Josh Howard is out. But this guy is now part of the squad there. Um, we're going to see him in his street clothes, it has to be said. But he may be working his way through the ranks soon. Because he's our very own. He is Pops Mensa Bonsu, as you can see there. Just check them stats. London, England, God bless him, born in 1983. <laughs> and, he's a, and, and that kid has done very well to get where he is. In fact, Andre caught up with him when he came back to London to do a little bit of shoe shopping. You'd think that's slightly strange, wouldn't you? Because you think he's in the land of the shoes. But no, no. He came home to get some more trainers. And, uh, and uh, Andre caught up with him. Just have a quick chat with him about many things, including his exemplary college career. It was great because, you know, now we're a part of history. You know, we, we actually did go unbeaten in our conference, but, you know, we lost one game during the regular season. But, you know, just to be a part of something that, you know, will never be forgotten is something special. You know, I'm coming from Tottenham, and now I'm part of history in another country. You know, it's, it's crazy. You were predicted to go somewhere in the second round. When your name wasn't called, what was going through your mind? Confusion. I don't know what was going on. I knew something had to be wrong. I know. I, 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 I it didn't really hit me until later on. I actually just went on draft. I didn't know what to do. You know, because it was one of my biggest dreams to go drafted, even though I'm in the NBA now. You know, but I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be drafted. You know, the first person from, you know, Tottenham to be drafted. But, you know, can't really say that no more. But I'm the first person from Tottenham in the NBA. So you know that part of London. But you know. It hurt, man. Okay. It hurt. When you received like, a call from Coach Avery saying that you've actually got a spot in the team, yeah. I mean, what was that? Must have been the best feeling in the world. Oh yeah, de it definitely was. You know, I was, um, I was overjoyed. You know, um, once he told me, it was like a dream come true. It didn't really hit me for a while. It still may hasn't really hit me until I actually get in the NBA and you know play against some of those yeah. players that I watched when I was younger. What can 
Pops meant to want to bring to the Dallas Mavericks that they didn't have last season? I think what they were missing in the finals, you know, I think, you know, Dirk Nowitzki is an amazing player and he does a lot of things for the team. But when you ask him, you know, to play, to, um, you know, be a defensive presence, you know, get 18 rebounds a game, as well as score 40 points a game and play the whole game and do that throughout the whole course of the year, that wears thin on him. And I think he got a little worn down, you know, and and I think some people, they didn't really know that. They just, you know, to the, um, to the public eye, it just looks like he, he didn't play good. But, you know, he does it for 120 games night in and night out. And, you know, I think what I bring to the table is, you know, the fact that I have defensive intensity, I rebound, I can run the floor, you know, I can help the team out in a lot of different ways. And I think they were missing that maybe. And I think that's why um, Coach, Hart, Coach Johnson, you know, was attracted to my game. Do you see yourself as a, um, a regular fixture in that team with a uniform for the rest of the season? Well, if you think about it, I'd like to see myself as a regular fixture because I don't think they would uh, pick up a, a free agent, an undrafted free agent, just to throw him down to the NBA. I mean, that, that's how I see it, you know. So I think that's my logic. And even even if they were considering it, I was going to do everything possible to make sure I'm on that 12-man roster every night in and night out and be on the floor also. That's one of my goals, and I intend on, you know, accomplishing it. What kind of team are they? And what type of team will they be in the season of 2006-2007? Driven. They were driven last year, but this year, when you come that close and then to have it taken away, it's like, you know, it's the worst feeling ever. You know, if you don't make the playoffs, well, yeah, okay, next year we can make the playoffs. If you get to the Western Conference Finals, okay, yeah, now we can go one step further. But when you get to the finals and up two games and you lose four games straight, that hurts. It hurt me and I wasn't even, you know, I was just watching. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's crazy. And, you know, you just see some of the players like Jason Terry and Doug and Whiskey, they just driven. I work out with Jason Terry and he said he hasn't slept since game six. You're a bit of a football fan. Uh, we were yeah. just talking about it a few minutes ago. I mean, who's, your, who's your UK team? Tottenham Hotspur. I, I, was, I was born uh, right down the street from the, uh, the White Hart Lane. And I can hear that every time they score, I can hear the goals. So, you know, I'm, I still live there. My mom and dad still live there. So, you know, I'm a Tottenham fan from day one. Okay. It's all right. Let's say three years from now, me and you sitting down in this same place, you doing your shopping, buying your shoes. <laughs> uh, what would you have hoped to have got accomplished within three years within the NBA? just to be established, you know. Now I'm in, I'm in the, I, I did the hard work to get here. Now I have to build upon that and do the hard work to stay there. You know, I want to be, a, you know, a household man. That's how I see it. I feel, why not me, you know, just because I'm from Tottenham. You know, I made the NBA, so why can't I be a star now? You know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to do so, you know, and, you know, just leave it in God's hands from there. When you guys play Chicago, I mean, <laughs> will that be, uh, will that be, I mean, for example, how will that feel to be on the same floor as one of your childhood, one of your childhood teammates? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, how will it be to be on the same floor as him actually playing against each other? When you're thinking that both of you, you know, grew up and played against each other in London, mm -hmm. and now you're doing your stuff on the world stage. That's the NBA. Uh, I won't know until it actually happens, but I, it's going to be more so like a dream. Because if you think how far we both come, everything he's been through, everything I've been through, you know, we played against each other in London, and now we're playing against each other at, at the highest level, you know, in the bigger stage, then that's just going to be, you know, a great accomplish accomplishment on his part and a great accomplishment on my part, too. Now, now do you have conversations with Luau? I mean, yeah. are you guys still in contact? Yeah, yeah, definitely. He spoke to me while I was in college and gave me good advice, and, you know, I asked him what it was like playing through the year, and. You know, when I was moving into my house, he was like, you know, you're probably going to need somebody to stay with me because it gets lonely when you come back from the road trip sometimes. So, you know, he just gives me advice like that, let me know, because he's been through it for a couple of years. And, you know, I'm lucky because I have somebody, you know, somewhat close to me to, uh, uh, you know, let me know how it is and go through the motions with me. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, we wish you all the best of luck. We will Thank be following you on Channel 5, mm -hmm. and hopefully, and I know, you won't mm -hmm. disappoint. Pops, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate your time. That, man. Thank Thanks you. a lot, man. I don't know why he just pops and Nash just don't go and play in San Antonio and get this whole Spurs thing just finished with because it's becoming slightly depressing for me now. Well, of course, it's, it's a shame, you know, as I say, because Pops is now, you know, he's on, he's on the fringe, he's, on, he's in the 15-man roster, which yeah. is great news for him, which we, we won't see him tonight. But what, what, what are his strengths? You know, what, what makes him an NBA player? Well, the reason why Avery Johnson brought him in, he wanted him to, he actually looks upon him as um, their version of Udonis Haslam. Right. Because Avery Johnson thought that Udonis Haslam was the one that made the difference when they 
actually lost the series to, to Miami. Yes. And he thought that what, what Pops has is he's got an excellent work, work ethic. Yeah. He does the, the blue collar work. He Good. you know dives on the floor after loose board, defend, defends like the hardest guy on the team, rebounds shots, and he can also finish strong at the basket on fast break. So there's a lot of things that he can bring to the game, but it goes back to experience. I mean, it will take a little bit of time for him to get into it. He's not as talented as Luau Deng, but he is as effective. And once he gets his opportunity and once he starts getting, you know, the five minutes here, the five minutes there, and then his experience builds up, then I think we'll be seeing a lot more of him in the future. Well, he only has to look across the floor to Ben Wallace, a guy who's, who was a slow starter and who did it by the journeyman's way to find out there that you he go. can there, be done. There are so many different ways. And as he spoke about not being drafted, but it was still an opportunity for actually him to go to veterans, veterans camp and actually be noticed in the summer league. And he did that. And it's only because of hard work and his work ethic. That's why he caught the eye of quite a few, not only Avery Johnson, but quite a few NBA teams were actually speaking to him, but he felt that Dallas was the best situation for him. So, well, last time we saw Chicago on the road, they did all right. They took Miami apart, which Not was a, bad at all. And it was, and it was a great night's basketball to watch as well. Now, I suspect it might be different this evening. What, what's your take on this one? Well, I think, as I said before, Dallas, they're under pressure because they need yes. to deliver a win at home. Also, I think with the changes that Chicago have made in the starting lineup, those guys are going to want to keep those starting spots. So don't be surprised if this game goes down to the wire and I will take Chicago. Whoa, interesting. Another road win for the Bulls on five. So the only thing we do now is go to the game, shall we? And let's see what's going to be going on. We do have Chicago in town in Dallas. Your commentary team tonight, Tom Daw and Johnny Red Kerr. Jason Terry with it on the dribble. That's Heinrich on him. Devin Harris out of Wisconsin. Looking as Terry comes around that screen. Harris top of the circle jumper. And Dampier with the rebound. Mike Callahan, Benny Adams, and Scott Foster, our veteran crew tonight. Dampier off the glass. Got it. Well, there's a, a second chance. Basket right away. Right away. Right away. Nocioni steps out on the floor, backs in. Dang drives through, slices, kicks out. Heinrich, jumper on the left side. Nope. And Dampier with the rebound. Novitsky gets it ahead. Terry, baseline, stack out, jumper, good. Well, we talked about it. One of the keys is not letting them get off to a good start because after the first quarter, they have struggled all season long. Duhan gets it way out wide. Dang flares at the three-point strike. Over to Nocioni. Makes some move. Drives into the bucket. Nope. Couldn't make the layup. And Nowitzki right there. Well, he can do that all night long because Dirk doesn't really like to play defense. He can attack him off the dribble. He's got to make that shot. Yeah, you got to finish. Harris comes around the screen. Wallace over to help out. Baseline stack outs take the three. Across the floor. Nowitzki jumper. And another second chance opportunity. Novitsky again. Yep. Wow, they read my scouting report. Not right after. Well, they're coming in off a two-game win streak after going 0-4. So they're playing with a little bit more energy. Heinrich off the glass and good. Heinrich drives to the basket and finishes, and they are playing well in those last two games that they've played. No, they haven't won here in this book. I bet they will, though. Yeah. Harris kicks it out. Stack outs for three. They keep shooting like this. No one will beat them. Well, what you're seeing right now is, is that Dallas is a, has a three-guard rotation out there, and every one of the guards can attack you off the dribble. Devin Harris can take you off the dribble, as well as Jason Terry. And Jerry Stackhouse is not bad going off the dribble either. Heinrich got bumped. Duhon inside for Wallace. Nice dish in. And it's blocked by Nowitzki. Ahead Stackhouse. Starts to drive, kicks it out. Terry open at the line, didn't take it. Now Novitsky drives in. Stackhouse in the corner. Comes around that screen, kicks it out. Harris drives in. Ball got tipped. Jason Terry, no. Long rebound and another second chance opportunity. Well, Jason Terry really shouldn't be able to get that offensive rebound. Somebody should turn and block him out and go get that loose ball. Novitsky now in a high post up. will back Nocioni in. That fadeaway that he loves so much. That's a tough matchup for Notes because he's a seven-footer that can put the ball on the floor as well as post up. Well, this is an old Phil Jackson. Let's see if we can play through it. Yeah, right. 
Dang starts to drive, got bumped, and a blocking foul. Go on Jerry Stackhouse. Avery Johnson, 78 and 28 in his career, went to the NBA Finals last year, lost to Miami. Coach the year. That's not bad, huh? No. Good strong drive by Luol. Heinrich pops out. Nocioni sets the screen. Duhan comes around the screen, thought he got held. Wallace turns, looks, and offensive, offensive foul. Yep. No. Oh, no. Defensive three seconds. Oh, I thought that was yeah. an offensive foul on Ben Wallace without a doubt. Ben made that turn. Yeah. And Mike Callahan was right there, but. Looks, you can't move. No, you take a look. Here's what we thought that was. Well, defensive three seconds on Dan Pierre, who was down underneath the basket. Wasn't really guarding anybody and got caught. Uh, they didn't matter because Heinrich could not make the free throw. Dang. Finds Heinrich, fakes the jumper. Nice move by Heinrich, and he got rewarded. Kirk Heinrich, uh, by the way, the All-Star voting team announced today five bulls on there. Kirk Heinrich, Luol Deng, Andre Kinochiani. Bulls just have to just slow it down a little bit. Don't try to get into this frenetic pace that the Mavericks want to play at. Duhan, nice pass off. Wallace couldn't finish. Fakes now goes up, and he'll go to the free throw line. I, I started to tell you about the All-Stars. Kirk Heinrich, Ben Gordon, Lou Aldeng, Ben Wallace, and Andres Nocioni all up for All-Star voting fans. Send some bulls to the All-Star game. The body, 8 of 13 from the free throw line, fellas. And he's looked he was pretty good, good too. Yeah. But we talked about it earlier. If, if the Bulls can get something out of being down low, that would help them out tremendously because then you're just not a perimeter oriented team. And Michael Sweeney's active tonight, so hopefully he'll be able to help them out on that department too. There he goes around the screen. Dan Pierre finishes. It's a great start for Dan Pierre. Well, it seems like they're trying to get him going a little bit early because they know that he's not going to be in the game that long, so they want to try to establish something down low. Heinrich looking. Starts to drive. Back Nocioni open for three. Nope. Ben, ben Wallace, what a great rebound. Kicks it out. Now Duhan open. Block. Block. Yep. He didn't see or hear the footsteps coming behind him. Nowitzki brings it across the stripe. Hands it off, Stackhouse. Back to Nowitzki playing a little two-man game. Now the Bulls switch. Harris drives in, wrap around. Nice defense. Chris Duhon anticipated very well. Ahead, Nocioni stops from 17. No good. No, 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 you no, can good. see that. Well, see, that's the situation. The Bulls have to get something good on that possession. They have the numbers. They got to get something going to the basket. Harris around the double screen. Gang on Nowitzki, and he can't catch the ball out of bounds. Bulls ball. The one thing you're going to see tonight, guys, is, is that these three guards are really going to push the basketball at the Bulls. You're going to see a lot of screen rolls, and then you have to worry about Nowitzki out there because he can find some place to get open and drop that three-point shot in. Kick it out. Gang starts to drive in, goes right, by everybody, strong. and does lay it in. Good strong move, Lou. Bull shooting two of nine from the field, so they uh, take it hard to the basket. Lou puts it in with the left hand. Drive in, up, over, and good. Eight of 11, the early shooting for the Mavericks. Bulls, three of 10. And Scott Skiles wants a timeout. 6-11 left here in the first. 17 to 7. The Mavericks have the early lead. We're going to overtime tight at 101. In the OT, Tony Parker pulls up for the long jumper. That gives the Spurs a four point lead. Nash answers at the other end with a jumper of his own. That cuts it to two. But the Suns had no answer for Fabricio Oberto. He was a perfect 11 of 11 in the game. Suns win 111, 106. Raptors with the last hand here. Chris Bosch fires up the three. That's good from the top of the arc. 
take another peek. The big man getting it done from downtown. Raptors up three. The Sixers now one last chance. Andre Iguodala cannot get it to fall. The Raptors hold on to win. Ray Allen uses the screen, knocks down the triple. That cuts the Magic lead to one. Now it's Luke Ridenour up top to Rashard Lewis. He comes down and lays it in. That gives Seattle a one-point lead. Magic, last chance, corner three. Hito Turkoglu gets it to go. Take another look. That's your game winner. Magic, hold on to win this one. 88-87 to 87 over the Sonics. Some overtime drama in Boston. End of the fourth. Sean May can't get it to go, but Gerald Wallace fights for the tipping. That ties it up at 100 apiece. In the extra session, it's Paul Pierce, the tough shot over Gerald Wallace. Pierce had 35 and 13, tying the game at 108. Here's the game winner. It's Delonte West knocking it down. Paul Pierce had 12 turnovers in this game, but nothing more important than that assist. Boston wins 110-108. Eddie Curry finds Stephon Marbury, who hits the late three-pointer here to tie things up at 106 on the ensuing possession. with the three-pointer and the Knicks go up 109-106. Well, Chicago Bulls with that change in the starting lineup. Ben Gordon and P.J. Brown came out before the game. We had a chance to ask Coach Kyles why specifically Gordon was not going to start. The main reason is I want to find a way to try to get Ben going. I mean, that's the main thing is that, you know, I, I realize we can't be, you know, the team we want to be if he's not a, not a main factor in scoring the ball and, and doing the other things he can do. And so I'm trying to find a way to um, you know, he can have a comfort level and, and get himself going. And, and, and if I start doing Kirk both, you know, I can bring Ben in and, and possibly with Tabo and let Ben handle the ball a little bit more. And, and uh, you know, maybe he can, um, you know, settle in a little bit and, and, and get some better looks at the hoop and, and, and hopefully, you know, start playing the way he can play. Bulls get a basket from Luol Dang there as Scott Skiles explaining why Ben Gordon comes out of the starting lineup. Terry comes around the screen from Stackhouse. Bull switch defensively. Stackhouse step back jumper and Luol Dang right there. Now with the situation with Ben, it's not necessarily good shot. No, it's not necessarily three, yeah. punishment. It's just a situation of trying yeah. to find a way to get him help going to help him because coming off the bench will take a little pressure off of him because he'll be able to go out there and do what he does best as far as scoring. Well, look what he did a couple years ago. Coming off the bench, he was the best six man in the league. And you know what, Johnny? He's going to play starters minutes anyway. Blocked uh, by Dang. A terrific block by Dang. Uh-oh, the clock. clock at two and one. They just do get it off. And it's an air ball, Bulls ball. Great block by Luell. The Bulls really have played through this, haven't they? Ben Gordon's last six games, you see the inconsistency that Scott Skiles was talking about. That's what he does. He comes in to score. You know, it's a situation and to be here in, comes. and we talked about it. I mean, he, he struggled since he's been in the league the first month of the season. Wow, for Wallace. Oh, yeah. That's a great pass. Good pass. Very nice. Well, he let him play through this uh, bad stretch. They were down by 10, came right back. Well, if, you can, if they can withstand this early Mavericks run, the Mavericks will let them back in the game. Long rebound. Dang does block out, and the Bulls come out of there with it. Duhan oh, oh. to Dang and just oh, a little that, bit too far in front. That would have been a perfect pickup and slam. Gordon now in at the 430 mark. Greg Buckner comes in for them. I expect Ben to have a good game. Just led him just a little bit too much. Must be that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Bulls looking to get a five count now. Oh, Ben. And Wallace almost got that interception. Good hustle, Ben. Here comes Buckner. Jack outside. 
when you look at the Mavericks stats, they're averaging 167 to 138 against the opponents in the first quarter. They play the first quarter better than they do any other quarter. If you go in the second half, they've been outplayed all season long. They've given up 104 points a game, and Avery Johnson, trust me, does not like that. No. Well, what they're doing, too, is they're giving up big points. Nice move there. They're giving up big points in the last quarter to their opponents, too. And this is a team last year was one of the better defensive teams in the league. Duhan. Uh, Dang, I'm sorry, lays it up and in. Good move by Luol Dang as he makes a nice move and lays it home. And he's off to a good start, too. Very strong and aggressive to the rim. Six points for Dang. His Buckner jumper from 15. He's come in and made a couple shots right away. Luol kind of got caught up on the screen right there. They've got to talk to one another and maybe have to switch that. Gordon, step back jumper is good for BG. They call it Ben Gordon. Interesting, interesting fact on uh, Ben Gordon. When he has two days rest, he comes in and he averages 20 points with a two-day rest. So I expect a big game out of the night. There you go. Nowitzki there with the screen roll. Just pushes off against Dan. That's it offhand. Lays it in. A lot of times you call for a lot of offensive fouls against well, him. He, you sure could. Yeah, I mean, he initiates yeah. a lot of the contact. He's got great footwork. He sure does. Gordon put his man down. Oh, yeah. Goes up, Stays got in. And the foul. Half a year out on him, and that's two for two for Ben now. So that coming off the bench looked pretty good. Makes a move, gets a basket, and he'll go to the line when we come back. Houston hosting New York. Pick it up with seconds left in the second quarter. Tracy McGrady, the off-balance buzzer, beating three off the glass. But the game was all about Yao Ming hitting the turnaround jumper here at 35 points and 17 rebounds as the Rockets win 103-94. Denver continues their road trip in Philadelphia. Carmelo Anthony and the Nuggets still looking for their first win on the season. And you could tell Carmelo Anthony wanted it in this one. Here he runs the fast break, gets the alley-oop from J.R. Smith and throws it down. Denver led by four at the half. Carmelo Anthony again putting it away in the fourth quarter. He hits the jumper, he had 31 in the game and the Nuggets win 108 to 101. Hawks up north tangling with Toronto. Joe Johnson and the Hawks look to improve on their best start since 2002-2003. Joe Johnson off to a great start in this one. He hits the jumper. He had 20 points in the first half. Atlanta up by nine at the break. Raptors come back. The nice reverse alley-oop finish by Chris Bosh. He had 19 points and 17 rebounds. But the Raptors had no answer for this man, Josh Smith. A career-high 29 points in the game. Hawks go on to win 111 to 102. Tito Turkoglu knocks down the triple. Orlando had an eight point lead at the half, but the second half belonged to Al Harrington and the Pacers. Check it out as he skies for the alley-oop slam. The Pacers outscored the Magic 28 to 13 in the third quarter. Now late in the third, Jeff Foster strips Dwight Howard. Pacers on the break. Guess who? Al Harrington throwing it down. He had 20 points in the second half and 32 in the game. Pacers win 93-83. Close game between the Bucks and the Wizards. We'll pick it up in the fourth quarter. Michael read the beautiful behind the back pass of the dunking Dutchman, Dan Gadzarich. He had 15 points and eight rebounds off the bench for the Bucks. The Wizards would fight back. Haran Butler drives in for the hoop and the harm. Butler at 14 points and 10 rebounds, cuts the Bucks lead to three. Now with a minute left, Anton Jamison recovers inside for the hoop and the harm. He had 24 points in the game, Wizards lead at four. And here it's Gilbert Arenas putting it away with a game high 29 points. Wizards win 116 to 111. Sonics battling the Bobcats. We'll pick it up in the second quarter. Brevin Knight looks inside to a Mecca Okafor who lays it in. He had 20 points and 15 rebounds. Bobcats led by four at the break. Rashard Lewis would step up, had a big third quarter. Ray Allen finds him. Lewis knocks down the triple. He had 12 in the quarter, 21 in the game. Sonics up 12 after three. 
in the fourth. Ray Allen puts it away. Hit a game high 26. Sonics win 99 to 85. Anthony Johnson out of Charleston comes in. Gordon at the line. Redhead, you want an effect finding miss, and I heard. Yeah, we got to find out what his name was. It's Maurice Hager. Johnson with the basketball. Cephalosha on him. Screen right, says Nocioni, and Cephalosha played it very well. Another screen right. Johnson bounces it inside, and Gampier, there's nobody going to stop that. Well, the, the rotation's not there. I mean, someone's got to come up and rotate on that. They either got to trap that in the corner and rotate big on big, or that's going to happen all night long. Because that's all Dampier wants to do is just roll to the basket and dunk. Jordan bounces it. Cephalosha starts to drive. Left hand, nope. And Buckner with the rebound. Gets it out to Johnson. Mavericks push the basketball almost every time when they can. Right side, Hager. Jumper from the wing. Nope, Nowitzki had it, lost it. Now Sione comes up with it. Got Gordon on the weak side, but takes that 17-footer and there knocks it down. Three-point game now. It was as big as 10. This is where the Bulls, Bulls can make some. Zone here. This is where the Bulls can make some way right here with the second unit of the Mavericks. This is where they're struggling this year. Buckner drives in, blocked by P.J. Brown. Here come the Bulls running ahead. Cephalosha drives up. He didn't have control you gotta go of that. Strong. You got to go up there strong. Oh yeah. And now Nocioni reaches in to pick up a foul. I don't think he had control. Fort Bull moves Telestrator. Stace, what are you going to look at? Here we go. We're talking about this rotation. Go ahead and roll it. All right, here comes here comes the screen roll. Stop. Now, rotation has to come here. Okay, go ahead and roll it. As he goes to the corner, freeze it. Someone's got to step up right there and stop that ball. These two Bulls players got to get there. That's an easy bucket for Dampier. There's got to be rotation. You either got to trap that hard and come up on the rotation, which they didn't do. About a minute left here in the first. Nowitzki with it on the wing, with Nocioni trying to knock it away. Runs into Nocioni, got it and a foul on Andres Nocioni. Well, Nocioni just got to stay on the floor and don't try to reach on him. Yeah, that's the second one on Noach. And uh, here comes Luel back. Just square him up. You know he wants to put it is right here. You know he wants to put the ball on the floor. Just square him up. He raises up the shoot. Just get a hand up. Well, the first two games, uh, Nowitzki had five free throws combined. In the last four games, he's averaging ten free throws. So he's going to the hoop more now. Vampire comes out. Tessagana Jop comes in. Given up, and Cleveland absolutely gave up on Jop. Yeah. Well, he's found a home here in Dallas. Oh, he has. He, well, played, he played extremely well in the playoffs last year for him. And Avery Johnson is not afraid to go to him. Gordon in a role he had earlier comes out to play a little point guard. Now drives right in, puts it high oh, off oh, the oh, glass man. and good. That, that fellas, that's a tough shot. Well, this is this is a role that he's comfortable in because he, there's no pressure now. He can come out there and just relax and go out there and just play basketball. Terry with it. Find Jop. Turns and looks. Nowitzki trying to post up. Gets position. Holds that shoulder and dunks the ball. That was a good power move. Good, yeah. Great move. Dang goes in at the other end. Had it stripped away. Got it back. Finds Heinrich. Open three. No. Nowitzki had it knocked away. Cephalosha had it. Lost it. And Nowitzki comes up with it. And now Dallas will try and get the last shot. It's a great hustle by Tabo. He's just got to be strong with the ball. Yeah, that's twice where he's had an opportunity right underneath. This ball game. Terry trying to get it to Nowitzki. Uh oh, they, they do. At the buzzer, the three was no good. We played one quarter in Dallas, a six point Mavericks lead. It was as big as 10. After one, Dallas up six. So it's a six-point lead for the home team. Uh, 24 points on the ball for Chicago, which they're going to be pretty pleased with, you know. I mean, that was, you know, because they, they were struggling there for a while. But 
fundamentally there's some flaws there, which which is very unballs like of the of the last couple of years. You're isn't talking there? one of the league leaders in yeah. defensive stops. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league. Now you are adding um, Ben Wallace to the team, you expect your defense to improve, but it hasn't. It slumped to a. They're like 20th in the league now, and this is why. Too many easy scores at the basket. No defensive rotations. Guys aren't getting up in the face, and they're losing uh, uh, losing sight of their their assignments. And scoring horrible, at the basket, yeah. yeah. You you allow a team to score at the basket, it's going to hurt you all the time. But there are glimpses, as we see here, with Luau going up against Dirk Nowitzki, and he comes away with the block. They need to contest shots. They need to get in the face of the shooters or else they're going to find it very hard to get back to where they were before. We know full well that, that, that Skulls is aware of this, don't we? And this is hence the rotation. But in, 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 in fiddling with the starting lineups and, and, and stuff like that, He's not really getting a chance for the fellas to gel, is he, therefore? So you are kind of going to lose a little bit of that, aren't you? Well, they, they, they're talking about this, this road trip being their circus trip because they're going to hit every single town on the West Coast yeah. in the next two weeks. And he's hoping this road trip will bring these guys a little bit closer together. Now, it's early days, so what he wants to do is he wants to tinker with the starting lineup to see if it will work. And yeah. if it doesn't work, he'll just go back to the same plan that he had before and try and work with that. But the defensive, I mean, you can miss layups, you can miss, you know, jump shots, so on and so forth. They started slowly, but there is no excuse for not guarding your man Not Lisa, which is because that is pure, that, 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 that's, that's what you base your season on. energy, isn't it? That's that is right. what you base yeah. your season on. You've got to get that, that right. That is your characteristics, and you need to stick to that. Exactly right. Okay, well, let's see if they can get it right in the second quarter. We'll rejoin uh, Tom and Johnny. And, of course, uh, we missed out Stacey King, of course, former player <laughs> Himself, isn't he really? It's a three man lineup, the three man whip on the bench, and we'll go back to the second half, uh, second quarter now. Talk about this is where they've been in trouble all season long is their second group. They are getting outscored 135 to 156 for the opposition, and this is where their defense kind of lets them down. Duhan finds Gordon, steps back. Johnson tried to stay in front of him. Gordon lost it, then tries to put it up, and a foul on Johnson. He, he took that shot that you take uh, sometimes practicing yeah, behind the back yeah, door, right. and he got fouled on. First quarter numbers. Big difference rebounding for the Mavericks in those second chance points. And the Mavericks have one starter out there right now, Jason Terry. It'll be interesting to see. Bulls fans get the very best seats and a lot of exclusive benefits for season tickets or an 11 game plan call 312-455-4000 or enjoy fun field group outing discounts and many great extras are available to reserve your group outing call 312-455-4000. Terry will bring it across. Bulls got a little half court trap there. Yep, they're back in that zone. Johnson comes around the screen. Well, Step. Terry, Terry's really your only shooter out there in that zone. Well, watch out for George. There he is. You have to find out where he is. Devin George is a little streaky right now. He hasn't really found his rhythm here with the Mavericks, but he's capable of knocking down threes. But Terry's really the guy. You really got to know where he's at. Duhan comes around the screen. Starts to drive. Nice dish off Luol Dang. Got it in the foul. Dang goes to the bucket, and he'll go to the line. Good pass by Duhan and right. He made a nice drive down the lane, looking for his teammate. Here he comes in. Nice pass, catch, and a foul. Jop got him with the foul. But one thing you're seeing out of Lou tonight is he is cutting to that basket, and he's going there with deadly intentions. He is trying to score. Terry with it. Step out by Johnson. Looking for the opening. Johnson doing a lot of holding of that basketball. Still holding it. Seven on the shot clock. Devin George with the jumper. Back of the rim. Jop tapped it, but Dang was right there. Duhan picks it up inside. Finds P.J. Brown. Got good position. Had it blocked. Cephalosha back on top. Shot clock at 12. Duhan calls the play, comes around the screen, starts to drive, gets it out. Cephalosha with the jumper, no. Brown couldn't quite grab that. Jop capped it, and Terry's right there. 
carry. Crossover. The defense and stay down. George trying to post up. Over to Johnson for three. Nope. And again, Lou Aldang right there. Get to the head. Here comes Cephalosha. Dallas does a good job getting back on defense. Cephalosha. Don't force it. Don't force it. Inside Brown. Gets it right back. Spin move. Lost it. Got it right back. On top, Duhan. Back, Cephalosha. Got bumped. No call. Right, Shot short by hey, the game right there. Lou Lay jumps it in. Right all over the place. Lou Aldang driving, hitting from the outside. Terry drives, throws it up. Nope, rebound tap. And now they'll reset. They're a little banging going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Deng went down hard over here. Heinrich ready to check back in. Buckner drives in. Nope, rebound loose. PJ tried to save it and did. Gets it ahead. Cephalosia. One on one with Johnson. Spins and a blocking foul. He had nowhere to go there on Bulls that play. lucked out on that play. He had Rook nowhere to go on that. Rook makes a mistake, but they're going to come out of it with the free throw or uh, a block. That's a play right there. He's young. He's making a mistake, but he's just got to pull this ball out. They don't have yeah, numbers. Right. Just pull it back out. Set something up. Now this is where this is another thing that the Bulls are, are still young. They have to recognize that Ben Gordon and Lou Aldang have it going right now. And you've got to find some way to get those, these guys the ball. They're scoring right now. They're going in the rhythm of the offense. You've got to find ways to get them the ball. You're, you're right. When Nowitzki's got it on, you don't find them guys going the other way. P.J. Brown bangs one home from 15. And it's a five-point game. Harris gets the high square. Finds Terry. Heiner trying to keep him on that side. Jerry Stackhouse from 17. Nope, and P.J. Brown. Bulls doing a nice job on the backboards now. Right side, Heinrich. Quick pass inside. Dang, had to go up high to get it into P.J. Brown. Got bumped. Goes up, oh, and he'll go, go to the line for a pair. Right. Good job, P.J. Good look in that time uh, by Dang to find Brown. We got a timeout. 8.31 left. trying to find out is how big is Dirk Nowitzki in Germany? <laughs> you don't, I don't know? understand. You don't understand? No. Uh, you're not a Dirk Nowitzki fan? I know. Yeah? I know. Uh, is he good? Good. Uh, just, uh, he's not my player. He's not my player, brother. Okay, who's your player? Alan Ivers, uh, Boris Joe. All oh, right. <laughs> I'm French. Oh! <laughs> wrong nationality. How big? Are you in your German? No. I'm Swiss. All right, we're in, we're in search of somebody German that speaks English to find out about Dirk Nowitzki. Are you a basketball fan? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, then who do you follow in basketball in the NBA? Uh, yeah, Sixers. Sixers, you're a Sixers fan. What yeah. about your homegrown talent? My homegrown talent... Uh, As in Dirk Nowitzki? Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> So you, you, you don't really follow Dallas then, you're a Sixers fan through and through. Sixers, mm -hmm. okay. okay. But you won't even follow your boy Dirk Nowitzki? Yeah, Dirk Nowitzki is cool, okay. Yeah, yeah, but he ain't <laughs> going, okay. So we found a German dude, but he doesn't like Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki. Best basketball player from Germany ever. Yeah? Yes. What do you like about Dirk? His shot, his speedness, all, everything, his moves. So he's the man as far as you're concerned. Yeah. One of the three best players of the league. And what do you like about his skills? What, what's your, what, what do you think is good about him as a player? His shot, his rebounding work. Stephens, he... That's good, but best at man. He's the man. He worked hard on the... Oh, he worked himself. hard, and he's the man. Uh, Dr. Nowitzki, uh, cool guy, uh, good player, and he's cool, yeah. He's just good? He's, he's just the best, okay. he's the best. Dirk's the best. So you came here because of Alan Iverson. All oh, right, so you're a huge Alan Iverson fan. You came yes. all the way from Sweden just to watch him in Germany. From Switzerland. Switzerland, yes, all the exactly. way to Sorry, got the place yeah, wrong. It's okay. So Switzerland, <laughs> all the way to watch him in Germany. Exactly. Who is your favorite basketball player? Uh, Alan Iverson, I 
Alan Iverson is your favourite basketball player. We're in Germany and Alan Iverson has more votes than Dirk Nowitzki. We've went all around the arena, we've looked, talked to every single German person, Swedish person, and every person that isn't Germany, German, excuse me, but the ones that are German don't think that Dirk is the number one man. It would seem that AI is the man in this building, in Cologne. Who would have thought it? All the way from the city of brotherly love in Philadelphia, and AI has got mad love in Cologne. The Wolves have trailed by 10, but these two free throws, though, they could take the one point lead by the slimmest of margins. There you go. But they won't. They could tie it. It's going to be interesting to see how long they're going to leave Dirk out. Yeah. Because this is a yep. quarter that they struggle in. Casey Terry with only basket for them is a three pointer. I believe that's the first free throw this year that TJ's missed. And you were right. He was eight of eight before that. Bulls with some pressure and they Little just did get pressure. it in. Harris draws the defender, finds Stackhouse on top, George for three. He's a streaky shooter from there. Heinrich looking. Comes around the screen, goes by everybody, headed blocked by Dan Beer, and the Bulls want a foul. It's just out of bounds. It's good, though. He's got to take that ball. He's got to, Kirk's got to do a little offensive work here. Nice block, and Dan Beer can do that. Now that's a, that's a situation right there when you like to see Kirk's aggressiveness going to the basket. That big guy's got to drop it off. Oh, oh beautiful. Oh, oh, by dang. Again, the ball fake, which they have to respect because he can hit that 15, 16 foot well, jumper. He worked on getting stronger this summer, yeah. and I'll tell you what, he has certainly showed an improvement in his game. Going hard to the basket. Stackhouse, as Wallace gets set to check back in. Stackhouse goes up, kicks it out. Terry for three. Nope, and dang, right there again. Good strong rebound. Tuhan backs it off, comes around the screen, bounces back. PJ open 16 footer. There, there you go, go PJ. Yep. And the Bulls have the lead, 37-36. Well, the, the two guys that come off the bench, PJ Brown with five and Gordon with seven. Nicely done, huh, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Scott Skiles' plan tonight so far has worked very well. Harris backs his man Duhan down, finds Devin George open for three, and he hits again. They've got three hoops in this one. They're all free. Heinrich goes to the basket, upset with himself that he missed the layup. Our hunt time for our Hyundai drive, and it's Lou all day. Watch this pretty move. Up, oh, nope. There it is. That's our Hyundai drive to the hoop. B.J. Brown comes out. He gets a high five from Coach Skiles as Ben Wallace comes back. Jason Terry out as Dirk Nowitzki comes in. And that's the that's the one thing that for Luau to to take the next level, the next step, because he's he's got the body, he's got the ability to be a very very good small forward in the NBA, and to see him come out every night, this is what the Bulls need out of him every night to give him that consistent score. Nocioni went to the locker room earlier. Now he's back in, and he gets the starting call on. I get to call him defensively on the Vitsky. Scott Skiles says, yep, that's who you got. Now he's got to be careful now because he's got two fouls, so he's got to really be careful. And you can hear Scott Skiles right in front of us. They're going to post up Novitsky. And there's Wallace on him. This isn't a bad matchup for the Bulls when he posts up. Wallace knocks it away with four on the shot clock. Well, he's not going to be able to just try to bully Ben. He's going to have to try to yeah. use his quickness, probably step off the block a little bit and face him up and try to beat him off the dribble. Had that fadeaway jumper. And they're saying hand back. They're going to give it right back to Stackhouse. They do. Novitski fade away. Didn't hit anything. Oh, two. Yeah, two shot clock violations now in this half. See how they get that ball on though? He took the ball inbounds, yeah. got it to stack out one dribble and reverse and right back to him. So you better be ready for Novitski the whole game. Oh, exactly. You can't fall asleep on him because he's always active in their offense. Gordon 
Starts to drive, gets cut off by Stackhouse. Now top of the circle, open jumper on the way, just short. And Nocioni had it, lost it out of bounds. It'll be Bulls ball. For a shot clock for the Bulls. Tough place to oh, to uh, inbound the ball, guys. They're right in that corner. But we have a play for them. Down you know they do. Gordon comes around that double screen. Look at that. And there just it is. Nice. You please. <laughs> just a nice, just a nice wheel action. It's all set up by Kirk cutting hard. If Kirk doesn't cut hard, Ben's not open on that right, play. Right. He doesn't draw the defender. We'll take a lead, guys. First time. Yeah. Novitski with it up high. George starts to drive. And offensive foul, Ben Gordon this time. And we got a timeout. 5.57 left in the half and a nice run by the Bulls. They're up 41-39. It's the Jazz and the Bucks at the Bradley Center. Bad news for the Jazz early on. Andre Karolenko chasing a ball out of bounds. Falls funny, twists his right ankle. He would not return to the game. In the fourth, Michael Red on fire, knocking down a three. He helped the Bucks come back from a 20-point deficit in this one. Michael Red, another catch and shoot three-pointer. One more time. Let's cue it up. Michael Red, this one to tie the game at 111. He sets a new Bucks franchise record with 57 points. But with the game tied, Utah Jazz on the attack. Matt Harfring lays it in to give the Jazz a two-point lead. Last chance for the Bucks. Can Red score 60? The three falls short, and the Jazz win 113 to 111. Listen. In the third quarter, Hawks on the break. Who else but Josh Smith on the alley oop finish? Smith had 24 points in the game. Down by two late in the game. Josh Childress tips it in, ties the game at 101, and we're headed to overtime on this athletic play by Josh Childress. Excellent play over the top. Now in overtime, Joe Johnson gets in the lane, hits the tough runner. That gives Atlanta the 112-111 lead. Joe Johnson with 28 points in this one, but Ray Allen would respond to drive down the lane. He gets it to fall. He had 33 points in the game. Hawks down one, looking for the win. Joe Johnson can't get it to go. Sonics win 113-112 for their fourth straight win in Atlanta. The New York Knicks on the road in San Antonio. Tony Parker getting it going early. Drives around the screen, the lefty laying. Take another look. That makes seven straight games where the Knicks are down double digits in the first half. Fabricio Oberto hands off to Tim Duncan for the one hand jam. San Antonio up eight in the third, but the Knicks would stay close. Stephon Marbury drives across the lane and gets the tough lay in. That cut the lead to five, but too much Tim Duncan. The nice lob pass by Francisco Elson inside. Duncan lays it in. He had 24 and 16 in the game. Tony Parker would put it away in the fourth with a sweet spin for the tough lane. He a season high 33 as the Spurs win 192. You know, Dallas has not allowed less than 96 points with any of their opponents this year. And so they score a lot, but they give up a lot. Well, this is not this is not one of their better defensive teams. No. And they've been trying to find a way to get it going defensively because Avery Johnson really stresses defense. Heinrich shot was too long, and here comes Dallas. Find the Witzke. Stackhouse around the screen. Buckner. Gives it right back, and now they'll set up. Dampier comes up high for the screen roll. Stackhouse drives in, lefty layup good. Well, someone's got it like that. On that play right there, as he's driving to the basket, you have to leave that guy in the corner. You have to leave that guy in the corner and step up and stop that. Well, you've got to remember, that guy that just scored the basket, got 57 against us one night. I mean, he Offensive certainly... Foul. Yep. He certainly can put the ball in the basket with either hand, and that was just a beautiful drive down the middle by him. Just took advantage of uh, nobody being there to help. Here's that drive right here. He's is, driving. Yeah, yeah Kirk's just got to come over there and step over there and stop that. Forget the man in the corner. That's Devin Harris. Make him shoot the three-point shot. Because the guy, the guy with the ball is the most dangerous guy on the floor. So you've got to stop the dribble penetration first, make him drive and kick. Well, sometimes you can't do everything perfectly, and you have to give that other team a little pat on the back for the nice drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Stackhouse is an all-star type player. 
Nowitzki missed that rebound. Luol Deng gets it ahead, Gordon. Gordon looks. He might have a two here. Three. Inside Wallace gets it right back. One dribble. Kicks it out. Heinrich drives right in and blocked. Ahead looking for Stackhouse. He catches up to it. Backs in. Gordon trying to draw the charge. Couldn't. But the Bulls get the rebound and escape there. Skiles says, how is that not a foul? Heinrich now follow a jumper on his own. And Nowitzki right there. Just have to know where Dampier is when you're driving to the basket and look to drop that off to a big guy. Yeah, Kirk has missed two. Good follow by Dampier. Heinrich. Gordon comes around that screen. Dang. Free throw line right back. Heinrich baseline Gordon in the corner. 4-3. Nope. Got to get some second shots. If you're yeah. standing around on the perimeter, Bulls you're settling for cold. jump shots a little bit. Got to start getting there and try to get second shots. Stackhouse starts to drive, had it knocked away. Gets it again. Starts to drive, picks up his dribble and throws that away. Was it tapped? Yes. Anthony Johnson's come back. Tyrus Thomas in. Luol Dang gets a break. Dang, 13 points and six rebounds, three assists, six of seven from the field. Rook's got to stay on his feet. If he's got staff out, he's going to stay on his feet. Novitski just backs his way in. Johnson on top. Nope, man. No Sioni right there for the rebound. Five points, four rebounds for Nocioni now. Gordon tried to get by his man, couldn't. Tyrus Thomas drives in, Ooh. lost it. Gets his own rebound, goes up, and got fouled. I don't know. He, he just absolutely lost it. Yeah, he, he did. He just lost it. He was, mo he was moving. Oh, Either one of you guys ever worn a mask like that? I have, yeah. I, got, I had a broken nose. I had a broken nose, too. But, but, fun. but the one I... That, that, that's a great mask. I had one that looked like... The old catcher's mask, you know, okay. half of it, the bottom part was out around the mouth, but around my eye. First time I took it off, too, and I played without it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting. I was waiting for the vibration. <laughs> and how, how big of, a, a, of an acclimation process tough. is it, guys? It's tough because your peripheral vision, you lose. There, there's blockage in here, and you can't see out. You can't see a guy on the left. You can't see the ball breaking out. Did you notice, Stacey, anything it, different? Sometimes the lighting affects your eyes a little bit in the arena. It just, it's just not used to wearing it, and it's uncomfortable. And the glare off the, off the lights really, I mean, is really tough. But they're a lot better now. I mean, like Red said, he was using the, the Jason Foreign hockey mask that right. he played. Long rebound. They'll get a second chance. Oh, he traveled. Oh, he traveled. Oh, he traveled. He took a step over the line. Scott Skiles says the same thing. It was a walk. Skiles says that's a walk. And we've got a timeout. Ben Wallace in this game, of course, for us. It would have been featuring last year for the Detroit Pistons as well, we know. Won himself a ring with them a couple of years back. And we're going to see how they're going next week when they take on the Philadelphia 76ers. The 1-3 loss at the moment, but Alan Iverson is going great guns. Really looking forward to seeing Iverson here on five. That's next week. We're going to be in Philadelphia and the Pistons will be in town. Meanwhile, back in Dallas. Give me three steps, baby. Give me three steps. Oh, yeah, he did take three steps. <laughs> yes, sir. That was Noach's third personal foul, too, which... So he's out. He's DJ out Brown is back. Now Wallace has got Nowitzki, and Wallace reached out and grabbed him. It's a hold on Ben Wallace. Oh, the one thing about Nowitzki is that he can always, he comes from different angles to set these screens. And when you're a guard out there, you don't know if it's a big man or if you don't know it's another guard, a small forward, a big on big. And he's just always moving. I know right here, Notes has got three fouls, and now Wallace picks up one, and that's it for the Bulls. Not now, because Kirk Heinrich picks one up. Heinrich says he kicked his leg out. I'd like to see this replay. Heinrich complaining that Terry kicked his leg out, and that's what he ran into, a la Reggie Miller. Watch and see if that leg kicks out here. Yeah, Kirk kind of ran into him down lower body. 
Mavs up by four, two and a half left here in the first half. Thomas tries to make the move and traveling. Yep. He, since he's wearing this mask, he is just too fast for his body. He, he is he is going 110 miles an hour. Watch him. You know that's just that's just being a rookie. You yeah. know, everything right now to him is 100 miles an hour. It's going I, real fast. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think he can see. I don't I just don't think he, he sees that clear with that. And I think I think with since he's been hurt, he's trying to do too much. You know, he's trying to fight his way into getting some minutes. And he's kind of thinking he's got to do a lot fast when he's out on the floor. Just relax. Oh, Let the game come to you. All right. Well, here's a situation where the Bulls were tied, took the lead, and now all of a sudden it's four-point lead. You got Nowitzki shoots two more free throws. You're closing out a quarter. Play D. Basketball fans, go to Bulls.com. Chance to win tickets to see the biggest games of the year. Kobe Bryant, the Lakers. Dwayne Wade, Shaquille O'Neal in the Heat, LeBron James in the Cavs. Just click on the Win Tickets logo. It's really that easy. Winners drawn every single week at Bulls.com. To win tickets to the biggest games, just go to Bulls.com today. Six point game. Heinrich. Takes his head. Yep, he wants the screen from Wallace. Levitsky over to help out. Duan. Wallace goes one on one, starts to drive, kicks it out. Duan fakes the three. Take Shot it, take it. five. PJ Brown will from 15 back of the rim. Wallace tapped it, but Dampier's right there. That's one uh, that uh, Duhan had to take that three. And Levitsky just threw it away. He was looking for Jason Terry to pop out. Terry didn't. And the Bulls get an opportunity here. Well, that's a great overplay by Kirk forcing that bad pass. He's got a little hand in the pass and they made him made him extend a little bit further than what he wanted to. Dang comes back for the Bulls as Tyrus Thomas will leave. Good rest for the while. Give him a couple of minutes on the bench. Get him back into the game. Devin George will come back. Devin George returns. Craig Buckner. He pointed to Buckner. Buckner didn't move. It's like the movie Major League Two, where the guy won't come off first base. Gets no, no, I'm not leaving at the end of the game. Not leaving. Well, they consider Devin George a, a really good defensive player. They want to probably to keep him in the game to slow down the wall. Heinrich. Oh, nice crossover move. Bounces back. Brown on top. Duhon. We've got nothing in 10 seconds of it. Wallace. Got clock winding down. Wallace may have to shoot it. Heinrich will have to shoot it. Driving, fading, high. Oh, oh yeah. How about that? Behind the board. Ooh, good shot. That'll win you some horse games right yes, there. You sir. can make that shot. Johnson around the screen. Chops it off to Jop, who had that one roll home. See, one thing about the Mavericks guards, when they drive to the basket, if they don't have a direct line, they're always looking to drop it off to the big guys. Heinrich bounces it. Dane comes around, drops it back for Wallace. Wallace, pretty spin move, finds P.J. Brown up, block, no call. Now Wallace stayed away, short. P.J. Brown there, goes up, had it blocked again. Dane Somebody. trying to get it. Devin George with a hold. Devin George picks up the foul on a hold. What pulls? Could not get a handle on that ball underneath. This is Kirk right here. You have the yep. letter H. <laughs> or E. That might be E. You hit that. That might be the game. That might be game. He's walking off the court with a game yeah. right now, baby. See, I know you're not going to make that. Good first half for Lou. Oh, dang, 14 points. Bulls fans, are you looking for a great run fundraiser? With the Tickets of Happiness program, you can purchase tickets at a discount and resell them at full price for nonprofit fundraising. It's a quick and easy way to raise thousands of dollars while sharing in a fun field night with the Bulls. Ask for tickets to happiness at 312-455-4000. 20 second timeout called by Dallas. I was just going to order my tickets for the happiness and 
I was You'd really be very happy feet listening to Stay Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> and then they call a 20. What the heck is that about? <laughs> All right, five point lead. They've got the ball. We'll split the free throws. And they're right there. I mean, they're 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 playing oh, yeah. they're playing good basketball. They're getting shots at the basket. They're getting some shots blocked, but they're attacking the basket and not just selling for jump shots, which is important for them, especially on the road against a team like Dallas. Neither think, team with a foul to give. You think about it. If you if you would have told us that the Mavericks would be struggling right now. And some of the teams that are the surprise teams, Utah Jazz has jumped out there now, and it's one of the better teams in the West. A boozer is playing unbelievable. Then how Degan Novinsky, that's a pretty good matchup, isn't it? Lou's playing an exceptional game tonight. Terry comes down, quick jump around the way. Jason Terry hits that. He won a two for one. Heinrich will bring it across now. About three and a half seconds difference, shot clock and game clock. Heinrich just dribbles. Waiting too long. Get the screen. Take the shot, Kirk. Two, one. He got fouled going to the basket. The move. With 3.7 seconds left. Foul mm, called on Jason Terry. Terry. Good strong drive right there. Yep. Hey, Dirk Whiskey is a big guy. Isn't he? I mean, a seven footer that can, can do some of the things that he can do. You, you've spent a lot of time in the studio last, last year, Stace, and now to come out and, and see these guys. It's been a while since you played in the NBA, yes. but now you see these guys, and, and it really is surprising to the average fan to come down and be close to the floor and see how big, how skilled, and how athletic these guys can be. Exactly. I mean, just, just looking, at, looking at Dirk Nowitzki, I mean, he's a seven-footer that plays like a guard. Yeah. And he's highly skilled. That's the European influence. The, 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 the finer points of the game, they do all those things. They don't have the high flying above the rim stuff. Ball tapped out will belong to Dallas Mavericks. Wanted a foul call. Novitski upset with Mike Callahan. Okay, let's see some technicals talking to these officials. We haven't seen that tonight. Nobody down this end. Watch the fly pattern. Three seconds, two seconds, one second from half court. Nope. One half of this game is done. 52-46, the Mavs with the lead. Bulls had a little run. They're right back in this. We'll take a break. Studio's got it. Studio has got it. We got the funk. <laughs> Positive false, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, Andre's I got remember the funk. The He's got it. <laughs> Mark's got the funk. He's got it. You'd have to be about my age and have to have done exactly what I did and to understand what the hell I'm going on about. You on the radio yeah, exactly. Playing, yeah. yeah. I'll stop that now, shall I? Um, that was a good half of basketball. Lots of scoring, nice and tight, and probably because we could see the chinks in both of their armours, couldn't we? This, this is where the problem lies. Mm. On Chicago's side, defensively, interior defense is really poor. Yeah. Really poor. It, I can't, there was countless dunks that the, um, Dallas had at the basket, countless drives that Chicago allowed Dallas to get to the basket, and it's just, it's just not what they're used to doing. No. And you'd expect with um, ben, um, ben Wallace in there to plug the middle, those things shouldn't be happening. And they are happening, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're down, down six points, and that quarter was 22 apiece. Obviously, you look on the other side for Dallas, inconsistency they start off red hot yeah. and then they go stone cold and hence that's why Chicago got back into the game and right now it's just the getting that get getting that rhythm getting that consistency and neither team can find it can't knock it too much because to say because it was very entertaining yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's from our point of view we'll take it but of course one of the nice things though is one of the guys to shine in there certainly and and we saw him defensively initially and then we've seen him on offense is, is our boy Luau Deng. Luau is the only bright spot on the uh, 
Chicago Bulls team right now. Because he does the graft, doesn't he? You're 14 points of six of seven shooting. And this is probably one of the reasons why. You know, he's tenacious on the backboard. He's yeah. very effective. He's long, wiry, hard to handle underneath. And he can also put the ball on the floor and make some circus shots going into the basket as um, the window is very kind to him on that drive. Absolutely right. No, it's, it, was a, it was a good half of ball for them and, uh, and the guys focused on, uh, focused on him as well. But it, as you say, it, it's one of those deals where Ben Wallace, who, who we know in the previous game that he played, that he played the whole game and was a massive influence on the entire thing, just looks like he's, he's, he's not quite he, there. And, and so the rest of the team isn't gelling around he, him, really. He, he looks like really out of sorts. You know, like the new kid that's joined the class yeah. and he doesn't have any friends. And that's what he looks like out in the basketball court. He seems very lost, very disjointed. And the criticism, once again, is defensively, what's he bringing to the ball club? They're paying him $60 million. And right now, they're not really getting their return. A guy that was averaging 11.3 rebounds last year, down to 8.8. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't sound like that much. But those extra two or three rebounds, really make a hell of a lot of difference. Well, they made all that difference as well when he was playing for Detroit because, of course, this was, we're talking about championship winning teams when he was making those numbers, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, and also when they give him the basketball, what's he doing with it? He just seems like yeah. he doesn't understand the offence, what's going on, and he's always looking for somebody to pass to. And when he is going to the basket, yeah, he's not known for his scoring, but he just doesn't look comfortable in that setting and in this game. Mind you, you know, as you say, though, it's early in the season and it's early in this game as well. So we had to have a good first half. Second half, obviously, coming up in just a few minutes' time. But I'll tell you who else has got the funk. Jackson's <laughs> got the funk as well. Good old friend of mine, a good friend of Andre's as well, is this particular chap here, who is Mr. Scoop Jackson. Now, Scoop is uh, someone that I worked with for many years and uh, I hung out around with just as many as well. Hard drinker. That's what I like about that fella. He is uh, the voice of basketball out in the States and uh, we were on the phone to him a little bit earlier on and we started off chatting about uh, life in his own hometown. He lives and does his hard work in Chicago. Well, I think the one thing for the season, I think they're getting comfortable with themselves. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing when you add a big addition like a Ben Wallace into the middle of a, um, of a system that they're not accustomed to having him in. So I think they're going through a uh, infancy period where everybody's trying to get to know each other. Uh, at the same time, I still think as good as Ben Wallace is, you know, and, and as good as the Bulls are, he only elevates them to a certain point. That's why you'll see them, you know, in the first game of the series, you know, uh, season, beat Miami by 42, and then come back the next day and lose to teams, you know, like Orlando, teams that they're supposed to be better than. So um, you're going to get heaven and hell with the Chicago Bulls this year. There's going to be some ups and there's going to be some downs. It's just a matter of when come May, how many ups are you going to get as opposed to the down? So you can't get a 50-50 anymore from there. you got to get like a 70-30 from there. Okay, Scoop. So let's go over across to the Atlantic Division, staying in the East, and talk about my team, the New York Knicks. That is. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on over there? And do you see Isaiah Thomas surviving at the end of this season? Um, yeah, well, yeah. surviving as a coach? Maybe not. Surviving as a person. <laughs> you know, because New York the is basketball rough, man. Context. Uh, yeah, he just, he just snapped off on us. He wanted to take out Bruce Bowen the other night. So, you know, if I say, if, if, if they, he doesn't get killed in New York, then one of the players on the other, another team may get him because he's going after everybody. Um, but I really think he'll probably last throughout the season because, you know, everybody knows what the roster he has and the way they played last year. If Larry Brown couldn't do anything with this squad, then you can't expect magic from Isaiah Thomas. Um, and I think, you know, James Dolan, the owner of the Knicks, you know, he gave him, he, he gave him the, uh, the cancel treatment calls when he told him, you got one year to turn this around. And he knows, you know, not only Phil, Phil Jackson couldn't turn this around, you know, in one year. So he's already, it's, it's a done deal already. He's just like buying time until they find somebody to come and take his place. Uh, will he survive? Yes. Uh, will he get his team to possibly play 500 basketball? If you had asked me at the beginning of the season, after the first game, when he went to triple overtime against Memphis, I'd say yes. But after looking at what's happened since then, i say no, nah, he might not even reach them playing 500 basketball. But will he last out the season? Yeah. I mean, who else is going to, who else are you going to get to do it? Yeah. Well, so it's literally a stay of execution from where you're Basically, you know, and the thing yeah. about it, if the players don't play for him, who are they going to play for? Because he's signing their checks. <laughs> I mean, bottom line, if every player in the Knicks organization owes him a bit of gratitude because he went out and got him when basically nobody else wanted him. Everybody was tired of C. Francis. Everybody was tired of Stephon. You know, he went out and nobody wanted Eddie Curry. And nobody wanted Jamal Crawford. You know, Quentin Richardson was on that. I mean, he went out and got players that nobody really wanted. So, to me, they're obligated to play hard for this man because he took chances on them. Now, the chances backfired and bit him in the behind. But you can't bring another coach in there. If they can't play hard for the cat who brought him over there. 
I know that you'll be keeping a weather eye on that, sir. And as well, of course, I mean, you know, you, we'll be talking during the course of the season, I'm, I'm glad to say. Um, but it'd be great to talk about the fact that New Orleans are kind of are, are back and, 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 and competing again. That might, and I know that from personally from your point of view is good news, isn't it? Yeah, no doubt, because, you know, I went to school down there, yeah. so I have a lot of history down there in New Orleans, and it's great to see, you know, what's going on, you know, in the city, even though they're splitting time with Oklahoma City. It's still good, you know, what's happening with the basketball team and what's happening with the football team. You know, they're yeah. starting to breathe some life in probably one of the most liveliest cities in America. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, from a basketball standpoint, man, I, I think it's beautiful to see them really get a chance to see the maturation of a cat like Chris Paul, who I believe is, you know, next Isaiah Thomas. Not from a business standpoint, but from a basketball <laughs> standpoint. <laughs> You know, Chris Paul is the truth. You know, um, got to see him in high school, you know, watched him in college. Uh, he, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal basketball player, and they're starting to get a good look at that. And that's a beautiful thing because as a city rebirths itself, they get to see the birth of a player, and he becomes synonymous with that city. So uh, Chris Paul is a very, very special player. So I'm glad to see, you know, they're getting wins. Byron Scott is getting that team to do things, you know, play above what everybody expected them to. And at the same time, they get to see uh, the development of, of a great, great ball player. Okay, so let's look at the, the league as a whole. At the end of the season, I'm pipping the Phoenix Suns. Oh, yeah, I'm jumping on that bandwagon. But right now, they're struggling. You're early, so early in general. <laughs> yeah, so I'll put my neck out. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They started off one and five. It's real early, dude. But, Dre, I'm with you, man, because I picked them to win 70 games. So we're on the same boat, dude. <laughs> okay, so, so who do you have uh, taken the whole thing when it's all said and done? Well... Okay, I said it at the beginning of the season, and I put a big asterisk by it. If, you know, I said there's two things. If Amari Stoudemire is healthy, I think Phoenix is going to be tough to beat. And I did say that because they got Kurt Thomas back, you know, and they got Boris Diaz signed. But Boris Diaz is, is he's done because he got paid, you know, so he may not be the same player. But if they get Amari back to being 80%, they'll be the team to beat. That was my little asterisk. My big asterisk is on Houston Rockets. And I'm telling you, if they stay healthy, and that's a big if because, you know, Tracy McGrady is, you know, prone to miss a lot of games because of his back situation. But I'm telling you right now, if they stay healthy, I don't give a damn what Phoenix does. They're going to be the team to beat. Anybody in the East that doesn't make it, if the Houston Rockets stay healthy, they're going to be impossible to beat. Impossible. See, that's Scoop Jackson. Knows his onions. And he doesn't mince his words Absolutely either. right as well. And, uh, and he's talking about... about uh, uh, Mince and onions. <laughs> but he's talking there about Houston, and of course, we'll be looking at those a little bit later on and focusing on the big man who is, uh, who is really the star of the show, one might argue, this, this point of the season. Do you know what? I was watching CSI New York earlier on uh, this evening on Vibe, and, um, and, and this fella actually gave his alibi as being the fact that his friend had managed to get Nick's tickets. That's why he never turned up at work. <laughs> now, you know that they told you this fella's a criminal because no one's going to turn up and watch the Knicks, are they? That's uh, no uh, alibi. Uh, come on, come on. I mean, see, that's why I'm not a CSI New York, but I mean, New York fan. Miami, investigation, <laughs> yeah. New York, no. No, see, no, there's the problem. Well, of course, you know, he, he knows you're struggling there, but it's interesting, going all the way back to the start of Scoop's conversation, you know, and, and to, to get us into this second half, he, he is seeing the, the, the fact that we, what we've seen in that first half, perhaps he's a microcosm of where Chicago are as a team at, at, at this moment anyway. You've got two new players, and they're big-time big, big time players, and PJ Brown and obviously Ben Wallace joining your squad that have been successful for the previous two years, and they went through a lot of troubles getting to that point, yeah. and they've all done it as a unit. Now you've got two new guys, as I always say, two new kids in the classroom, and now you've got to find out a way of actually getting them involved in a situation. So it's almost as if you're taking three steps back to yeah. actually try and take another step forward. And it's going to take them a little bit of time, but I see them getting it, getting through. Hopefully, they'll get it through by the end of November because this is pretty much their preseason. But this kind of gets us back to where, where the Mavs are at this point then, doesn't it? Because, of course, if we're looking at a team that was a little bit kind of unraveled during that first half, Dallas never put them away, so they've got their own, they've got their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, demons, haven't they? They busted out the gates. I mean, 15-2 yeah. up. Yeah. You, I thought to myself, good grief. Could get ugly. Sh it's mm. going to get ugly. It's at home. Chicago's on the road. Are these guys really upset about what's happened to their starting lineup and finding time to adjust? But quickly as we say that, as, as quickly as um, Dallas fell off. They fell off, the, the wheel fell off, and they actually were struggling to find where they're going to get their scoring from next, and they were un, weren't unable to make any defensive stops. Now, what Avery Johnson wants, is, is, is talking about right now is getting his team back to that hunger 
the hunger that they had when they had the chip on their shoulder last year, when no one pipped them to do anything and just right. a work in progress. And he told them, no, we're better than that. Let's go out there and prove to the world that we are one of the, the league's best. And they went out and did that. And that's what you want to do in this half, isn't it? So go out there and really just put them to and the he sword. Wants to find that, exactly he wants to right. find that hunger within his team. Yeah, I wouldn't find out how he does it now, going back to the second half. And as I say, uh, obviously more action from Texas during the course of this half as well. We'll be seeing how Houston are going at the moment and then seeing about their Chinese connection when the quarter comes up. But for now, let's go back to Dallas in Texas. We join our commentary team with Tom, Johnny and Steve. See. Extremely loud in here. Yeah. If you're not awake coming out in the third quarter, you're awake now after listening to that. <laughs> Heinrich will bring it across. On top it goes Nocioni. Heinrich trying to bust out here. Comes around the screen. Starts to drive. Oh, offensive oh, foul. Tough come call. On. Moving Tough with the call there. He never was set. He's moving sideways. You gotta be planning in front of the guy. Yeah, that's a foul right there on the Whitsky. Sliding. Yeah. The Whitsky fouled him on the coming around that screen. Harris finds Terry. The Whitsky. Get a dang on him. Got it. He seems so effortless when he takes a shot like that. That's his first basket since the first quarter. Yeah, he was 0 for 2 second half quarter, wasn't he? Yeah. Heinrich comes around the screen. Dang starts to drive. Finds Duhan. Steps inside. Nice pass. Wallace got it counted in the foul. Nice find by Chris. Yes, sir. And Avery Johnson out on the floor, upset. Dirk Nowitzki is down. Here we go right here. He just ran in. He just bumped heads right there. And Mavericks have to take a full timeout. 51 seconds into the third quarter. We'll take it with them. 54-48. Timeout. Battle of the Bigs in South Florida as Shaquille O'Neal and the Heat host Yao Ming and the Rocket. Early on, Udonis has him with the miss. Dwayne Wade behind the back to Shaq Daddy, who slams it home. O'Neal with a double double, 15 and 10. Dwayne Wade, the tough fall away. Jay, that falls. Miami led by seven in the first. Later on in the first, Tracy McGrady pulling up for the jumper. He had 12 points, nine assists. Miami up four after one. Yao Ming getting it going. The turnaround hook over Alonzo Morning. Yao with a big day, 34 and 14. Dwayne Wade, as time runs down in the first half. The follow slam, Miami the three point lead at the break. In the third, little history for Shaquille O'Neal. He passes Patrick Ewing for 15th all time on the NBA scoring list. But late in the third quarter, Rafer Alston hits the three to put Houston on top. They led by four after the third quarter. In the fourth, Jerron Howard sticks the jumper. Again, it's Tracy McGrady distributing, finding Luther Head for the corner three. And Yao Ming would put this one away with the tough turnaround J over Shaquille O'Neal. Rockets win 94-72. In the second, check out Maury Seven skying for the slam. Beautiful work above the glass by Maury Seven. Ryan Cook, the sweet backdoor dish to Lamar Odom for the slam. Lakers really pulling away in this one. Kobe Bryant with time winding down. The lefty runner in the lane. Bryant had 20 points in the game. Lakers up 19 at the half. The only bright spot for the Grizzlies, Mike Miller. Six three-pointers in the game. He had 21 points and 13 rebounds. Lamar Odom, he's got range too. Knocking down the deep three-pointer. Odom had 20 points and 16 rebounds. Lakers up 10 in the fourth. Maury Sevens ahead of the pack for the reverse slam. And Showtime Lakers having a little fun now. Check this out. Kobe Bryant between the legs. Back to Smush Parker for the lay-in. That looks good as the Lakers win 91 to 81. Ben Wallace goes to the line for one. And it's short. Must have only tapped it. Wallace right there gets it back. Dang says, you're going to give me that? Okay, I'll take it. Thanks. There you go, Lou. 
Just playing with a lot of confidence tonight. Oh, yeah. Seven of eight from the field, 16 points and seven rebounds. Nice pass. That's really a nice pass. And that, and it's a little all, bit of a bailout. I mean, but. that's all set up by the explosion to the basket. I mean, he's so quick. He makes everybody have to collapse on him, and he finds the big man. Well, that's what Dempier's numbers are great today. He's five for five from the field. Nocioni backs right down on George. Oh, offensive foul. It's in the circle. I mean, come on. This is flopping. Number four on those. Malik Allen with his first action of the evening. So Nocioni will sit. So maybe we'd see Victor. Here we go. We talk about Dirk running into the body. Ben Wallace. Here it is right here. As they collide heads right there. Pow. The body takes him down. You really don't want to run into Ben. No. In he, any in any he, way. Yeah. He's a guy that you wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley. Without a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> Harris. Good job by Duhon to stay in front of him. Out to Terry for three. Nope. And Allen comes in, gets the rebound. Duhon pushes it ahead. Now he'll slow it down. Allen, top of the circle, just checked in, and the jumper won't fall. Stackhouse now pushes it ahead. Wallace beats him to the spot. Oh, blocked man. it. Wallace saw that the whole way. Heinrich ahead, Duhon. Open dang. Hit one from there just a minute ago. That one wouldn't fall. But Malik Allen right there. Second chance opportunity for the Bulls. There we go, set it up. Six point game. Screen roll, Duhon right back. Allen walk. Yep, he should have taken the shot. He yeah. thought about that shot, but didn't take it. Here it is, Ben, right here. He saw this coming the whole way. He knew Stackhouse was going. Not in my house. Get that out of here, Stack. You're too little. You're too little, Stack. Harris brings it out. Double oh, dribble. Yep. yep, that's Bulls ball. Absolutely. Harris didn't like it, no question. Yep. Well, Malik's going to have to shoot that jump shot. That's his shot. Yeah, right, exactly. Because Dan Pierre wants to stand back and play his own. He can knock that shot down all day long. Heinrich cut off, takes the shot, finds Wallace. Heinrich almost fell down. Now Ben Wallace with the jumper. And here come the Mavs. Terry gets Nowitzki out on the screen. Up high, Stackhouse. Ben Gordon ready to check in. Stackhouse held by Luol Dang. will pick up the foul, Dang. Gordon in. Chris Duhon checks out. Harris looking for the open man. Terry around the screen. Now Nowitzki pops out of the post up with Wallace on him. Nowitzki tries to get open. Good defense That's by good Wallace. Defense. Here comes Heinrich. Ahead, Luol Dang comes up under and good. Good move, Luol. Well, the Bulls needed that move. Uh, they yeah. were sitting on that six point deficit here. Well, it was all, it was all started by defense by Ben Wallace. Making Nowitzki take a tough shot. Stackhouse with it now with Heinrich on him. I know where your help is. Pretty good move. That's a strong move. Strong move by Stackhouse. But you got to know that's a mismatch with Kurt. Even though Kurt's a very good defensive player, the size advantage is there. You got to be ready to help him out. Gordon around the screen fakes the shot. In the lane, Ben Gordon jumper, nope, rebound Dampier has really given them some good minutes. Now long outlet pass, Stackhouse, stops from 12, in and out. Six point game, whoa. Dang on top, Malik Allen. Jumper goes up and rattles home for Malik Allen. That's his shot. Yep. Now if they can get him involved in some of that high screen roll action, Terry. They post up Stackhouse again high. Here it is. This is the play. The high post. 
Heinrich right there defensively. They forced him to pick up his dribble. Stack. Novitsky with the soft jumper. Got the great touch. Off balance. Good look at the basket. Always oh, squares and it makes it look easy. Well, he got set up there with a screen by Stackhouse. He set a screen for Novitsky to get that shot. Gordon, tough shot, free throw line jumper. Nope, Dampier with the rebound. Ten points, ten rebound. Stackhouse drives through, kicks it back. Harris. Gordon over to help out. Harris kicks it out. Now Stackhouse will take the three. Well, they definitely got to get something down here now. And a timeout is what they're going to get. 6.23 left in the third. A six point game, 60 to 54. Mavs with the lead. What lies behind us? And what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Circles on the dribble. Malik Allen rolls over. Nobody comes over to pick him up, and he'll drain that. It's all day. Mavericks got confused whether Nowitzki or Dampier was going to pop out on him. Neither did. And the Bulls cut it to four again. Well, now you got Wallace on Nowitzki. Oh, now they switched back. Nowitzki with it. Drives down, and he'll get a foul on Malik Allen. Now one thing on that play right there is that you've got to send him to the help. You've got to know where your help is. You've got to force him to the help side. Because he's too dangerous out there to leave him out there one-on-one. -on -one. Bulls fans, all of your fantasies can come true. Simply visit Bulls.com and click on VIP Auctions. Bid, dot bid on fantasy experience such as center court seats, VIP packages, pregame courtside floor patch, passages, and autograph player jerseys. What? <laughs> For once in a lifetime experience, visit Bulls.com and click on VIP Auctions. <laughs> kind of hit me with the curveball there. Right, well, you know, I believe you. Right, Heinrich. Around the screen, looking for the opening, lost it, got it back. Shot clock at 10. Allen with the screen roll. That's a oh, foul. And a that's nice. a foul. There were two fouls there. Novitsky didn't get it. He straightened but, uh, him up. Novitsky straightened Devin him Harris up. Watch did. this. Watch this. Here it is. That's a Shot foul right there. Easily, that's a foul. And that's a foul. Anthony Johnson comes back. Evan Harris will leave. I mean, you go back to how Notes got his little touch fouls. And then you look at that right there, and it's like, what are you looking at? Yeah. A lot of hand checking. Gordon going to the bucket. The giant killer. We haven't seen that in a while, and it's no good. Terry with a rebound. Good help. And good help again. And that's where the third rotation didn't happen. Gordon this one tonight. Camp here, 12 points, 10 rebounds, 6 of 6 from the field. They've all been in just that variety. Heinrich starts to drive. Oh, That's goaltending. Goal Count that. You bet and the foul. Those needed a basket. Sitting down there now at an 8-point deficit. Heinrich, 11 points, 5 assists, points in the paint. 36 for the Mavs, 24 for the Bull. Just a lot of hand checking, especially when the Bulls yeah. are coming off yeah. screens. A lot of grabbing and holding. Five-point game. Terry with it. Two shooters on the floor. Terry Novitsky. Know where your help is. Good job by Allen. Heinrich tapped it out. It'll be a second-chance opportunity. 
Buckner gathers himself and throws it away out of bounds. Oh, it's going to be Dallas Ball. Bulls touched it last. That's a situation where the Bulls have to know who to rotate on. Where the shooters are on the floor, stay on the floor with the non shooters. Terry and Nowitzki are the ones you have to really, really be concerned with out on the three point line. Four and a half left here, third. Johnson starts to drive, cut off. Gordon knocked it away. Top of the circle, fakes the shot inside. Nowitzki won't miss many of those. And then got kind of hung up on the screen right there. He's either got to fight over the screen or they got to double team that screen. Heinrich gets through that double team. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, how about that? He's made something out of that shot. That was some chicken salad, dude. Yes, sir. That was chicken salad. Terry. Now calls out the play. High screen roll. Terry, top of the circle, quick jumper. Nope. Rebound tapped out. Will be picked up by Johnson, and they'll get a fresh shot clock on this. Johnson looking, finds Terry around the screen. Terry, crossover move into the lane, goes up off the glass. No, but a foul call. And Gordon will pick up the personal. Split the double team right there. I thought he walked and he did. I called a walk at the time and yes he did. Just like Dirk Nowitzki in the first half. They don't call that in the NBA. It's in his contract, didn't it? <laughs> Devin George comes back. That was another one, those, uh, another one of those horse moves right there. In the game. Again, yeah, that's an E. Pulls 19 times to the line, but only 53 percent. B.J. Brown comes back, and Ben Wallace will leave. Now, if I'm the Bulls, I'm staying in that high screen role with Malik Allen. They've been able to get some nice movement on their offense with that. Devin George will guard Allen here. Gordon. Waiting. What a hand Waiting. Gordon, baseline jumper. Oh, that's a rainbow jumper that goes in for Ben Gordon. Ben just put it in his face. Like, get your hands off me, Terry, please. You've had a death grip on a five point. Yeah, it just done five or six. It's been that way the whole third quarter, practically. Johnson kicks it out. Devin George with the jumper. No nope. rebound and a foul on P.J. Brown. Bench number strong for the Bulls as it's going to be just about every game. 21 to 12 Bulls lead this one. Adrian Griffin out this evening. We told you that. Got a calf injury. It is right there. Just put it in his face. Oh. And then you can do it about that. Shake his hand. You know, I mean, that's... Terry drives down, looks for somebody to pass it to, and comes out of there with a foul call. Malik Allen picks up that foul. So the Mavs at the line. Told you they are eight of eight from there. This, you don't really want them really getting to the line in the second half. Well, you've got our, our inner four sitting on the bench right now. Ben Wallace has got five rebounds tonight. He hasn't had that spectacular game that he did last game at home. Campier leaves, gets a nice hand, 12 and 12 for him. Well, he's pretty much doing what you expect out of him. He's staying close around the basket, he's giving him solid defense, and he's rebounding. Yep. They don't run a lot of plays for him, but they do look for him when they attack that basket because they know he's a finisher down there. Heinrich comes around the screen. Top of the circle jumper just does curl in. Kirk Heinrich knocks that home. 16 for him, and as Johnny said, it just stays at that five point. They go up seven. Bulls come back, make it five. Jop up high for the screen roll. Terry. 
DJ Brown stays to help back to George baseline Johnson now backs it off. Allen over to help out. Johnson's pass deflected by Dang. Shot clock goes off, and that's a shot clock violation. Bulls ball. Good defense. Good defense. Good defense. Yeah, they continued that rotation, fellas. That's about their third one of this game. A lot of dribbling. A lot of dribbling by the Mavericks. Good defense. Hands in the passing lane. Now the Bulls just have to recognize who's on the floor, where the shooters are. The Mavericks have a lot of slashes on the floor now. Heinrich finds Gordon. Starts to drive, gets cut off, bounces it out. P.J. Brown, jumper good. Well, now it's a three-point game. Close that door now. Terry, Terry's the primary scorer in this team right now. Kicks it out into the corner. Three on the way is good. Oh. Anthony Johnson knocks down that three. And it's right back to six. Heinrich double team. Bounces inside for Allen. Bounces out. Heinrich takes the three. Johnson over to get him. Starts to drive. And throws it away. Stackhouse back in. Jason Terry will lead. Falling apart here in the last two minutes of this quarter. Johnson brings it across the strike. Starts to drive. Kicks it out. Stack out. On top. Buckner for three. Just did hit the backboard. And here come the Bulls now. Just under a minute left in the third. Heinrich around the screen. And there's a holding foul on Anthony Johnson. Well, the one thing about the Mavericks is they're tough after they're leading after three quarters. They're 291 and 24, 92% well, of their games when they're leading after three quarters. So that's something to keep an eye on, too. They're still giving up a ton of points in that fourth quarter to the visitors this year. Heinrich starts to drive, crossover lost it. Buckner accelerates. He's got Stackhouse with him, and there's a foul. P.J. Brown reached out and held him. And they're discussing whether this is going to be a flagrant. P.J. trying to trying to plead his case. The officials talking. He made a play on the ball. Here he is right here. Fast break. Two on one. Just held him. Just grabbed him. So no flagrant. Just a regular foul. Yeah. He just grabbed him. But that still should get him two free throws and another couple points on that lead. Well, turnover on the other end. Really put them in a bad situation now because you had a two on one break. Yeah, last two minutes. Enter the Chicago Bulls sweepstakes for a chance to win a complete home theater system from the Little Guys Home Electronics are one of the many other great prizes from United, Verizon, Wireless, and Dick Sporting Goods. Visit Bulls.com or fill out the entry form on the back of the Bulls tickets or pocket schedules. Join us. 75-67 now as the Bulls have cut into it a little bit and the Mavericks now extend it. Right back, Malik Allen, jumper from the wing, back of the rim, and Devin George with a rebound, now pushes it ahead. George for Harris. Harris on the dribble, stack outs up high for the screen and hold it. Yeah. No. Hold on, on first two on. Well, the Bulls didn't want to do it, but they're going to go in for this fourth quarter with a 10-point double-digit deficit. Unless they make up their mind to do something about it with 21 seconds. Well, they've kind of gotten away from what's really got them into this game. It was attacking the basket, getting second-chance opportunities, and forcing Dallas into taking some bad shots. 
Bulls one of two here in the quarter. Dallas nine of nine. The free throw line. One of two, fellas. Jack House. Got both. Bulls have 21 seconds now to get a basket. Cut this under double figures going to the fourth quarter. Gordon makes the move, comes up and under, and blocked, they say, out of bounds. It'll be Bulls' ball. 10.9 seconds left. They have been dominating in their painted area defensively tonight. There's a drive right here. They got seven. That's their eighty long shot of the night. But when a big guy comes over like that, you've got to make him pay a little bit. Got to drop that off to the big guys. Six, five. Malik Allen fadeaway jumper rolls in with 2.4 seconds left. Two seconds. One second from half court. That was just short. Third quarter is done. It belongs to the Mavericks. They lead it 77 69. We're going to the fourth here in Dallas. Felt like a quarter that Dallas would dominate, didn't it? I mean, again, the, the strange enough, the point gap isn't that massive, but. Um, but Chicago seemed to got to sleep a little bit in that heart, in that quarter there. Defensively, I, I know I keep harping on no, about it's, it. It's, Defensively, it's the point, isn't it? they really need to start locking up, stopping them from scoring so easily at the at the basket, and not allowing outside guys to get get shots. I think they're doing a good job on the on the exterior around yeah. the three point line, but interior, there's just. Um, the weak side rotations aren't quick enough. They're not keeping their assignments in front of them, allowing them to get basically, to the basket so easily. Just, uh, the weak side, basically, this is just guys covering around the back, yeah. isn't it? It's being aware of where the movement is on the on the, on the so offensive side. Yeah, I mean, side. it's like you know, if you are away from the basketball and my man's got the ball and my man beats me and you're just like daydreaming on the yes. opposite side, there's no rotation. You need to be in a position where you can rotate and help at the basket, and that's not what ball, they're getting ball enough watching. of. watching, you're right, absolutely right. That's what's been going on, and not enough of this from this fella as well. I mean, because Ben Wallace, you know, when he's on his game, it's what happens all the time. Yeah, establishing yourself at the basket. And as you see here, Ben Wallace showing just a little glimpse of what he does on the way he did on a regular basis last season. Similar and to this what, as well. Yeah. I mean, this seems, you know, innocuous, but this is what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, Putting uh, the whiskey in, off his stride. Nowitzki is trying to back him down. When he when Luau Deng was guarding him, and that, that good defensive play led to a fast break by Lu Luau Deng. Yeah. But when Luau Deng, Deng was guarding him in the first half, Nowitzki was able to back him down because he's got the size and the, suit and the strength to get him down into the paint. Yeah. With Ben Wallace, it's a totally different deal. Yes. Because you're not going to back Ben Wallace down. As you saw when he ran into Ben Wallace, it was similar to a brick wall. Absolutely, yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's he right. came off worse. Very similar to a brick wall because, of course, he, you know, he, 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 he didn't even flinch. The, no. I mean, he wasn't even looking. He was prepared to take his licks, yeah, according to He just, dust, dust the, he just exactly brushed right. the dust off and then just got on with it. But, I mean, yeah. it just shows you what, what he actually brings to the table. Yes, strength, and yes, he's a good interior defender. We know that from last season. But so far, we just haven't seen enough of it. I'll tell you one man who, is, who has it is Groove. And it was, and this is probably why uh, Scoop mentioned it, and, and, and we've all mentioned it over the last few weeks. Houston Rockets look like they could be a serious bet this year. Is Yao Ming, and now Yao arrives in this league as meant to be a superstar. And you look at a fella who looks a, little, a bit rookie, a little bit kind of rusty. Not anymore. He took Miami apart personally, here, didn't he's, he? He's been in the, in the in the in the league a few years. He is now part of the establishment. He is Houston Rockets, and they need to. Uh, I mean, he's just proven himself as one of the superior. I mean, the, the argument's still out there. Yeah, Yao doesn't do this, Yao doesn't do that. But he's done a great job against one of the league's best, Shaquille exactly. O'Neal. So therefore, you've got to give him credit for that. Now, if he can do that consistently, and with the additions that the, that the Houston Rockets have made in the offseason, then you're looking at Seriously. a team that is going to be a contender, but they must stay healthy. Because the problem is, we've got T-Mac always injured, Yao Ming always injured. Those guys yeah. need to stay healthy for Yao's, the season. Yao's got, I mean, you know, we always thought, you know, he's got to get stronger. And if that strength adds to the fact that he might stay a little bit more injury free, then they could be frightening. You say that though, of course, that's the problem with Shaquille. I mean, Shaquille, in, in reference, you know, somewhat grudgingly respecting <laughs> Yao Ming. He's pretty much the same, just big, seven foot six. He's just doing what he's supposed to do. Well, he did it pretty well on Shaq, didn't he? That's for sure. Well, what else is he supposed to say? You know, because no, exactly. you know, Shaq still wants to let everybody out there know that, yeah, I'm still the man. Yeah, he had his one night, you know, he, and Shaq had a night off, but. 
You know, are we seeing the changing in the well, guards? Well, not the end of the year, not least, because of course, you talk about injuries. And again tonight, and we'll be giving you the uh, final scores uh, of tonight's games at the end of our game. Uh, tonight, Denver and Miami uh, matching up. The Heat were again without Shaquille O'Neal because of a hyperextended left knee. Heard that one before. His second injury to the knee this season. He's day to day again. This is not a great start, is it? Uh, we, we, we need. Um Pat Riley's got to be thinking to himself, I need to keep my big man out of foul trouble, first of all. I need to keep him injury-free. Uh, there's so many things surrounding well, Shaquille when Pat you're Riley coaching did. him. And yeah. the thing is, you can't, you, you, you can't, yeah, you can always guard against too many fouls, but you can't guard against injury. And that's the thing with Shaquille. He's, he's at the, in the twilight of his career. He is very injury-prone, and Pat Riley's going to have to do a good job of managing that or getting somebody else in a, other than Alonzo Mourning to pick up the slack when he's out. Yes, indeed. Well, we'll find out uh, whether that slack was picked up. We'll see how Miami went against Denver a little bit later on, as I say, and the other scores as well. But for now, we've got a nice, tight last quarter for you. Let's see who comes out winners in this one. This is, this is where now the fourth quarter, they've got to dig down deep. They've got to find a way to try to pull this out. And it starts on the defensive end. Stackhouse. And Harris. Harris drives down, kicks it out into the corner. Stackhouse, seven on the shot clock. Around the screen. Stackhouse looks, throws it into the corner, almost threw it to Pete Myers, Devin Harris for three as the shot clock went off. I thought Pete might be the guy that was going to catch that. Instead, it is a large Dallas lead. Brown with it on the post up with Jop on him. Dang flares into the middle. That one was blocked. Out to Duhon, waited for the man to go by, finds Ben Gordon for three, and he got fouled. He got fouled, and will go to the line for three free throws. Dustagana Jap picks up the personal foul. Big fella didn't even need to be out there like that. Just raise a hand up. And foul a jump shooter. It's the number one rule. Well, the Bulls can get three back here in a hurry, which is kind of nice, but they got to tighten their defense up on this end, especially that, that perimeter defense. Well, and Dallas did it without Nowitzki on the floor, guys. That's the interesting thing. It's like, how long is he going to be sitting out before he comes back in? Well, another interesting is he's averaging only 3.3 points in the fourth quarter of their games this year, but I think you put all that stats aside. <laughs> Well, he's the guy that makes his team go. If he's their go-to guy. He's the guy that makes them a legitimate contender in the West. Gordon, 14 points off the bench for the Chicago Bulls. Harris comes around the screen. Now Stackhouse with Duhon on him. Stackhouse spin Whoa. move. Duhon right there defensively. Yes, Stackhouse still made it. That's not much more you can do, guys. That's solid defense. I mean, he was right up on him. We wondered how much longer well, Nowitzki talking, will be out. You're he's talking about coming. a guy, Stackhouse, that's an all-star. Yeah. Now he's, he's, he's been in a little role here of uh, coming off the bench, and he, but this guy is, has been a, a major player. He can score. He can he's bonafide. Yeah. Oh, well, he can score a lot. The one thing about him, he's accepted his role here in Dallas, is that he wants to be on a contender. You know, he's always been on a team where... The team is built around him. Now he's on a team where he's a piece of a puzzle. Ben Wall is back. Luol Dang will sit down. 18 and 7 for Dang as he comes out. Also got three assists. Now the officials want uh, the floor clean some more. Looks like curling, John. Are we in Toronto? <laughs> Fast, 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 fast. Well, that's hustle. Yeah. I saw something on television yesterday, and I still don't understand it. I'm listening. What did you see? Cricket. Oh, I'll tell you about that. <laughs> I don't know what they try to do. They throw the ball hard. It can go into dirt. It can go over the yeah. back. Oh, yeah. Anyway, nice drive. Oh. line goes up and out of bounds. Duhon wanted a foul call. May Adams says, your ball with six on the shot clock. 
Good strong drive. Well, no wonder he wanted to foul. Yeah. Obviously, he'd want to foul after that. DJ e. Brown gives it right back. Duhan runner short. And here comes Dallas. Stackhouse now backs it off. Stackhouse drives back. Novitski for three. They get another opportunity. Harris over. Offensive foul. Andres Nocioni stood and took the charge. Kirk Heinrich's coming back. Duhon will come out. Jason Terry in. Stackhouse will leave. Definitely a charge. Harris thought he was in a circle, but I don't know what he was watching. He was by the dotted line. Good job by Andres. All right, let's start to make a little tightening news yeah. here, guys. Yeah. Well, it's just one of five from the three-point strike. Brown looking for somebody to get open. Nocioni drives in nice up and under. Shot. Nice move. And uh, Dirk Nowitzki just stands and watches him go. Well, that's something they, they need to investigate because you can attack Nowitzki. He doesn't really want to get out and play defense. He blocks shots from the weak side, but he doesn't really like to be challenged. This is where he's dangerous. Heinrich over. Terry lost it. Good, Good hustle defense. by Double Kirk team. Heinrich and Ben Ben Wallace, and the Bulls get a turnover. Well, that time they tried to set that screen for Dirk, and Kirk jumped out there right there. Yes, Good did. play. They want Nowitzki involved in the screen roll. Gordon starts to drive, got his man in the air, and they got hit hard. And Ben Gordon will go to the line. No, pass off. They're going to rule it was a pass off. Oh, yeah, they do. Johnson back. Nice play. It was a good pass, too. Well, that's what they need more of, especially the guards. When they get in there like that and they're attacking the basket, and you see that big guy coming up, you drop it off to the other big man on your team. Heinrich that's around the screen. 15 foot around the way. Kirk Heinrich knocks it in. You get the feeling. Here they come. Yep, yep. They need, no, they Six need point no game. Lots of time. Terry on the dribble. Runs into Stackhouse. Novitski fadeaway jumper. Oh, good. It's just it. You know, every guy's got a fadeaway. The great starts. That's his. That's his shot. That is his signature shot. That fadeaway jumper. Well, what makes it so effective is he gets you going one way, yeah, and, and then, then he rocks right back, back and steps back the other. Heinrich up. Oh. No follow. Wallace. No Brown tapped it. Goes up. Had it blocked. Terry. Heinrich nice from play. behind got it. Heinrich, what a hustle play. Now looking up the floor, Heinrich brings it across. Bounces it, looking for Brown. PJ throws it back out. Ten Dallas blocks. Heinrich around the screen, top of the circle, right back. PJ Brown jumper around and out, and Dampier there again. He's had a great game for them. 12 points, 13 rebounds. Terry with it again, this high screen roll. Novitski with the fadeaway jumper and timeout. Scott Skiles wants timeout right now. Eight minutes exactly left. The Bulls made a run. Two Novitski jumpers and timeout. Man, sports, we love you. Yeah, on five as well, you know. Look at this. What a double header we've got for you. Uh, it's, it's basically tabletoppers virtually all the way. Both these two teams, seven and two, AFC West tabletop are there, which means after this one, one of them's going to be eight and two, the other one's going to be seven and three. I worked that out with the help of several people. Sunday night, 1.15. And then the Giants, they're at the top of the NFC East at the moment. They're going very nicely. And the only reason the Jags aren't at the top there because the Colts haven't lost yet. So that, that's why they're not doing it. That's why they're not top of their own division. So a cracking game as well. 1.20 on there for that one. That one will be coming from Jacksonville. So two great nights of NFL for you. Forthcoming and eight great minutes of basketball left for you in Dallas.
Here we talk about this play with Dirk and Whiskey, and we see Ben Wallace there on him. Go ahead and roll that. As he sets the screen, freeze it. Kirk's got to fight over the top. Ben's got to put a body on him right there. Go ahead and roll it. Dirk Nowitzki does not get that shot. They've got to put a body on Dirk as he's coming up to set that high screen roll. Gordon could not hit the jumper. A 10-point Maverick lead, 7.40 left. And I'm sure you're going to see it again. Here it is again. Terry for three. That play has really hurt the Bulls. Well, that's a tough play to stop because you have to pick your poison. Are you going to fight over the top? Are you going to double-team Nowitzki, or Terry's going to stop and pop just like he did right there? Well, Gordon there goes up with the left hand. Loose ball, there and is, here comes Dallas. There is no perfect way to, to stop that. You can try both ways over the top, but if they're hitting it... There's foul called as Nowitzki goes to the bucket. Andres Nocioni picks up the foul on a push. Here it is right here. Here's that high screen roll we talk about right there. Kurt goes underneath the screen roll, which gives Terry enough time to square up and knock that shot down. He's got to come over the top of that screen. You've got to push up on Nowitzki when he sets that screen and fight over the top and try to get some help on the backside. Last time you said he had to slip under it. <laughs> if they worked to play effectively the last time, with Nowitzki, and now they work it effectively because there's options on that play, Stace. Yeah. I, 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 but you can't. you got to pick your poison. Plays are set up with, yeah, you pick your poison, you, and, you, you, and they lost both times. Exactly. <laughs> but what, what you're doing, though, with, with Nowitzki is you're giving him too many options as he's coming up to set that screen. You've got to put a body on him, and then the guard has got to go underneath and collect Terry on the other side. Gordon. Comes around see, the screen. Now did you see how Johnson played that screen roll right there? Giant killer was no good. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass. Yeah, or I'm what? not sure. But the last two attempts here have been futile by the Bulls. And We're going to go again. They're going to have to give up a ton of points here tonight. There it is again. Out to Buckner fakes the three. Drives in. Johnson for three. Nope. Ball is tapped at Heinrich right there. Ahead uh, Nocioni and he won't be able to get it. Probably see this 1 4 high screen roll again. But you, you see, uh, you see Nabitsky working pretty well here with uh, with Terry, and then all of a sudden, out of the corner comes Johnson or, or Buckner. Nabitsky with Wallace on him starts to drive, kicks it out. Buckner drives, running one hander. So you, have to stay off, you have to stay on the floor with him. Don't rotate out to Buckner. He's not a three point shooter. When you leave your feet on a shot fake, that's what he wants you to do. You're playing to his strengths. Heinrich starts to drive, backs up, jumper good for Kirk Heinrich. Heinrich, 20 points, five assists, two rebounds. You'd like to see him get maybe a little greedy. Heinrich, you're talking about? Yeah, look at the bat. He's one of our a few guys that scored this year all year for it. Nowitzki, the fadeaway jumper. Nope. Dang right there for the rebound. Had it knocked away. You heard the slap by Dampier. He'll pick up the foul. And we got a timeout. 533 left. 93-78. The Mavericks with the lead. Ah, uh, there's daylight starting to open up there, but there's still a lot of time left. Okay, look, just give you a few uh, I'll give a heads up as well of what we got forthcoming. That one next week, great game, Detroit Philadelphia. Yeah, it's going to be good to watch the Detroit go up against Philadelphia, who's seen a massive resurgence this season. Really started off well. However, Chris Webber still struggling. True that. Do you want that night off, 28? <laughs> New York, Chicago. Okay, Dre's going to take the take the back seat there so he can cry on his city at home. Uh, December the fifth, Sacramento again, a team worth looking at at the moment, isn't it? And, and of course. Phoenix, is that you liking? Well, that's my team, Phoenix. Hopefully by then, they will have um, got Amari Stoudemire firmly implanted in their offensive um, rotation and um, should be a Phoenix win. Kobe Bryant on December the 12th and the Lakers. That, that's going to be a tough but game. But more's the point. That's going to be a big time We're going to get a look at Houston. Great news, isn't it? Because, I mean, it? you're talking like um, Lakers are now 5-1 and one at the moment. And you, as I was saying to you earlier on, Kobe's realised there's four other players on the court. And Houston, yeah. we spoke about earlier on, it's going to be a real good matchup. And on December the 9th, it's Steve Nash, uh, one of the many Tottenham Hotspur conspiracy theorists uh, who is in and around the league. It can't be right. And they've got Toronto meeting them down in Arizona. So that's what we've got for you. The next five games here on five. Five or so minutes to go in Dallas. Here it goes. 
to Dirk Nowitzki. He has been everything they wanted him to be. Typical night for the All-Star. 27 points, eight rebounds, 10 of 19 from the field, made all seven free throws. Well, this is typical of the teams we play. Four out of five guys in double figures. It seems like they're starters. Bulls scramble to get two guys in a double figure. Elcioni gets back, gets it back. We'll take the three. There you go. Now we need to get up and play some defense. And Jason Terry will bring it across with Heinrich on him. Terry looking. Novitsky comes off the screen. Quick pass inside. Get here. Puts it in. Doesn't miss the thing. Oh, today. it's even great. 14 and 13. Heinrich. Cross back. Nocioni up, and he got fouled going to the basket, and he'll go to the line. Buckner's foul. 14 fouls now. Bulls is just one team foul. One more for Nocioni. Starting role tonight, 11 points, four rebounds. Free throws, how about this? 16 to 16 Bulls have gone to the line seven more times, made two less. And the rolls continue. And you have to make your free throws yeah. on the road. Yeah. If you're going to get a win in a place like this, you 58% won't get you many wins. Screen roll. Terry comes right back, finds Buckner for three. Rebound. Bulls. Here come the Bulls. Across the floor. Oh. Sioni was going to the basket, and the pass goes behind him. Terry Stackhouse wants to come in. They will say he was not ready. Bulls with seven turnovers in the second half, and those ones like that. Those free ones, yeah, unforced turnovers. Well, you, you, you come down and you get a defensive stop, and then you come back down the other end and turn the ball over. You, you're just not going to get back in the game doing that. Don't jump the ball. Heinrich <laughs> reached in and got the ball. Well, I won't. I give him great credit to get the jump ball, but I don't give him much of a chance of getting this jump. Devin Harris comes back. Let's see if he taps it straight back to Stackhouse. Devin Harris, one of the two. Oh, watch Gavir. Oh. Little quick tip. There, Gavir. That's where he's going. There it is. Bulls trying to mount a comeback here. Dang, going to the bucket, goes up and in. Luol Dang makes it an 11-point game. Just under four minutes left. Terry on the dribble, looks back. High screen roll with Novitsky. Terry drives down, jumper up. Nocioni with the rebound out to Heinrich. Bulls can cut it under double figures. Heinrich goes to Dang and a foul called. But there could have been about two or three fouls and a technical foul on Dirk Nowitzki. Foul on Nowitzki. Technical foul, Dirk Nowitzki. There was an argue foul, wasn't it? Yeah, that's that's what they're going to call. Heinrich, free throws have got to make the free throws. Missed both of those technical free throws tonight. One was an illegal defense. That's the regular key. Right. So Lou with two free throws here. They could have used a. Coming up Tuesday, December 19th, Bulls will host the Lakers. Bulls and Bud Light present Love a Bulls poster night. While supplies last, all adult fans 21 and older get a Love a Bulls poster courtesy of Bud Light. 
For Bulls tickets, it's easy, fans. 1 800 4 NBA TAX or go to Bulls.com. Kobe Bryant will be there. And now Avery Johnson wants a timeout. 337 left, 95 86. The Mavs with the lead. Tomorrow night, Nick Hawley's back in the chair, Russ alongside him, of course. And it's the Montreal Canadiens. And they're going to be at the Tampa Bay Lightning. That is your NHL hockey tomorrow night. 1.30 on air. Nick and Russell, Canadiens and the Lightning. Back to Dallas. This evening, you ask, how's it going? Well, 48 for Dallas, 45 for the Bulls. Harris brings it across on the dribble. High screen roll. Heinrich does not let them use that. Terry pops out. Bulls in his zone, I think. Yeah, Bulls in his own. Nowitzki, spin move. Heinrich there to help. Gordon got it, and he will take it coast to coast and missed it. But dang right there to lay it in. Bulls go zone, double team that high screen roll, and get a basket. Now it's a seven point game. Come on, defense! Terry on the dribble. Bulls stay zone. Stackhouse, corner Harris, Stackhouse in the lane, jumper up, bounces good. That's a big basket right yeah, there. Yeah, you're making a run and you got two and a half minutes here. Heinrich comes around the screen, gets to the bucket, kicks it to the corner. Three on the way, front of the rim, nope, rebound tap. Harris comes up with it. Fakes the pass, lays it in, and Scott Skiles wants a timeout. That could be game step match right there. A 20 second timeout called by Scott Skiles with two minutes and 20 seconds left. 99 88. The Mavericks with the lead. Well, uh, actually, Ben got a good shot out of the corner. Kirk making a penetration and kicking it out. But the rebound bounced out just right. It was a two on one fast break. Devin Harris laying it up. Toyota 20 second timeout. Luol Dang there. The Giordano is delivery of the game. Giordano's delivery of the game. That's a screen roll with a different count. Here come the Bulls now. Heinrich brings it across. Got to get something good on this trip. Heinrich jumper. That is pretty good. Heinrich knocks it in. 22 and 6 assists for Heinrich. Now you just got to get a defensive stop. You can't give them an easy basket. Two minutes. Harris drives in like that. All the way. All the way. You're absolutely right. I mean, to take that ball all the way from the top of the circle and get to the basket. And nobody waved no at one, him. No one even saw it. It was like an eye Heinrich pass. got the same thing at the other end and picks up the foul. He goes right around the screen roll, lays it in. I mean, two bad defensive sequences by both teams. You, you cannot let a guy drive all the way from the top of the circle. To the basket without being contested. 25 for Kirk Heinrich. Ooh, now you're really thinking, I wish we could have made some three throws. Now, goal 17 of 28, 61%. Terry. High screen roll. Ooh, he turned it over, I thought. Terry stops, baseline jumper, rattles home. Jason Terry, 17 points, five rebounds, five assists, 27 points, and 10 rebounds for Nowitzki. Heinrich bounces Dan Wallace, and Wallace got fouled by Stackhouse. That was a nice pass right there, finding big men rolling to the basket. Wallace will go to the line. It is right there, high screen roll. Ben just rolls to the basket. Stackhouse, hard foul, make him earn it from the foul line. Oh, sure. Kind of flipped that ball.
Ball was one of four from the line. 5.7 rebounds. There you go. That one to settle home. Gordon tapped it, then kicked it out. Pretty good hustle by Ben Gordon. Terry will bring it across. With Heinrich on him. Screen roll coming. Terry comes around the screen roll and misses the three. Ball is right there. Bulls have to hustle now. Heinrich drives inside. Dang lost it out of bounds. It'll belong to Dallas. George comes back. Kurt Freddy had laid that ball right out in his hands perfectly. So they take their worst free throw shooter out of the game. Harris brings it across the strike. 45 seconds left. And Bulls now do foul with 42 seconds left. Well, let they had a foul to take. Uh, and you know, they did it basically going to a half court offense. They didn't do it right, running. Right. You know, right getting away, a lot yeah. of easy baskets. They set up a, a two man game. Oh, Novitsky with an elbow. But they say that the bump first came from Nocioni. And Nocioni has fouled out of the game. Nocioni leaves 11 points, five rebounds, four of seven from the field. Dallas 16 of 16 from the free throw line, fellas. I mean, this, they're a good free throw shooting team. I mean, they, when you think about their offense, everything goes through dirt. They have good spot up shooters. And you've got Eric Dampier, who pretty much is like a vacuum down on the block. I and mean, then any loose ball down there, he's getting them. They don't really utilize them a lot down in the post, but it's very effective. A 20 second timeout called by Coach Giles. But Tommy, we talk about this all the time. That, you know, the key for, for a young team like this who's trying to find an identity is getting off to a good start in the first quarter. Our producer of Bull Basketball and Comcast Sportsnet, Bob Albrecht, director of the Millennium, James Arthur Angio. He's going on vacation, by the way. Happy vacation, Ann. Associate producer, Tamara Anderson. Stage manager, Jackie Fisher. Master control operator, Melissa Galbraith back there. Hi, Melissa. Jim Corno Jr. is our executive producer. But you, you have to get off to better starts, especially on the road. And you've got to kind of try to come in here and take the crowd out of the game. Doesn't get any easier. Uh, Houston's playing very well. San Antonio. Yao Ming right now is, is playing some really good basketball. Trace McGrady is healthy. San Antonio beat Houston tonight, 92-84. That's they surprising. Are, two pretty good teams. They are 18 for 18 from the free throw. Yep. And 50 percent from the field. Two on for three. Back of the rim. Gang gets the rebound. Gets it over. Gordon will launch a three and hits. 105-97 now. Five seconds. Oh, timeout. Time wow. Out. Dallas, they say. That looked like five seconds to me. A 20 second timeout. That looked like it was five seconds right there on that inbound play. You guys were counting fast. I was watching the referee's arm. He was right on it. He said four and he called a timeout. Okay. <laughs> so you're a 20 second timeout here. So I was a little fast. I, what you're but telling me. You know what? We're a little bit too late 
and try to do all this, cram all this stuff in right. a 32 second period. Right. Well, we talk about it all the time, but this, you know, this team has to come out and play with the energy every night. Yeah. They're not they're not flying under the radar anymore. They're not going to surprise anybody with the way they play. Everybody knows that the Chicago Bulls team is much improved. Novitsky and hold it. We've got a foul. Ben wow. This guy just keeps putting points on his average. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get him to the free throw line. Novitsky came in averaging 25 and 9. He's got 29 and 10 tonight. And he set out a lot too. He First time out. he went out, the Bulls made a run. The second time, Dallas made a run. Well, he, he gives you so many different options to have a guy. He's a true go-to guy. Right. He's a right. guy that can get his points on the perimeter. He's a guy that can get his points on the fast break, and he can post up inside. Five he's, double doubles for him today. He's, he's a tough matchup. Yeah. And he's seven feet tall. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that can deal with him. No. Duhan's going to drive right down and lay it in. Chris Duhan. It's a two. And now Stackhouse fouled by Luol Deng with 26 oh, seconds left. All right, so one thing you can say, they may not have started well. They, you know, there's a lot of things you could say. You play for Scott Skiles, if you give up at the end of a game, you will have problems with Scott Skiles. Oh, you're, you're not, you're not going to play. I mean, you'll be sitting on that bench. Basically, you might as well put a suit on to be a coach because, you know, the one thing I like about him is, is that he's not afraid to make changes in his lineup as we saw tonight. You know, he's trying to get this team going. He's not going to stand pat. If, if he feels like his team is not playing well, he's going to look and make that adjustment. And do you think, Stace, do you think the lineup changes worked tonight? Well, I mean, it's, you could say it worked. I mean, they, 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 in their sequences where they played well, but you're not going to, this is not going to be a one game type thing where you're going to see a big improvement in one game. You've got to give it some time. Gordon step up, throws it, and it almost went in for three. And then another foul. You know, we look at this. This is a this is the first time that he's made this change. You know, no sound he's got to play better. He got in foul trouble tonight early. He's got to play better. You know, Ben Gordon came off the bench and, and you know he had a he had a halfway decent first half. But this is gonna be a, a type of team who's gonna have to let him play a little bit more to actually see what's gonna happen. Jose Juan Maria from Northeastern comes ready to check in. I thought he was a coach. <laughs> I, I saw him moving up. I, I thought he was a coach. Did you really I, did. I thought he was a coach. You know, Mark Cuban likes to wear uniforms all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of thought that guy was a coach. He's got to get. The floodgates opened the first quarter when you get on the road. They got to let it all go. And they sort of are in a pace, the pace car, you know, I mean, just hanging around. Well, you got to come out swinging in the first quarter. That's what I mean. You got to give, you know, give it all. You know, I mean, because teams get momentum early. And, you know, we talked about it earlier. That was one of the keys is trying to slow down the Mavericks in the first quarter. Scott Skiles walks off. Bulls open this circus trip with a loss. 111 to 99. Pat Carey standing by back in the studio. Take it away. Yes, yeah, Scott Skiles looks like he took that defeat well. That's, um, it, it's, I can understand, you know, I mean, technically, you, they might expect to come to Dallas and, and not win the game. Um, it, but it, play better. Wind about, exa exactly but play right. Better. There's the deal. At least be it? competitive. Go down to the wire, and you know, at least you can see some kind of positives yeah. that will come out of that game. You look at that game; there was hardly any positives defensively. They were absolutely poor, yes. and that's what they need to address. They need to sort out their defensive, and their especially defensive at the start of a road trip. You know, this is you know, you get to yeah, get that right. Two weeks on the road yeah. with your boys and your teammates, and you're traveling around playing some pretty tough. Western yeah. Confer Conference opposition, you need to be able to stop some people yeah, at some true. point if you are going to come there back. Is the argument that you, but there is the argument that people use that road trip for that very purpose. Yeah. Is that they kind of get that bonding going, they can kind of tight, you know, they can get the, the glue can come to start working, but that's. 
<laughs> clutching at straws or something. It, it, it is. Well, Dallas, and again, the, the point being is that, you know, Dallas, with, with this kind of like, you know, with this, this cold start that they've had to the year, perfect for them, isn't it, really? Just to kind of get that, you know, they start to remember how to win. They're on a three-game winning streak, and yeah. um, after their last win, Coach Avery Johnson said that how they seem to have that hunger back. It seems yes. like the same team that he left back in back in June after the playoffs. So I think that they're finding their way. Job. They're growing with confidence, and especially with one of their main scorers out, out of the mix, they've actually grouped together, and as they say, a dangerous animal is a wounded animal, and that's exactly what right. the Mavericks are at the moment. Yeah, that's right. I, I should, there's a lot of people who quite fancied them 10 days ago who now I'm having the next 10 days and think, oh, well, OK, yeah. moments pass. Right, OK, before we leave you and uh, take you to some supercar action, uh, we we'll give you the score roundup of the rest of the night and start with uh, Milwaukee, 103, 103-101 uh, over Atlanta. That's a, that is a good victory given the way Atlanta are going. And Michael Red, who just cannot stop. He's leading scorer. 30 points in the fourth quarter in that one there. Including the score, that the, the, the go-ahead score. That's right. We're going to find uh, the next week or so. We'll be giving you some uh, some more stats about uh, who's doing what around the league. Uh, Denver, <coughs> they've got themselves, they've got their act together, haven't they? And against Miami, they'll be delighted. And they're another team that was struggling to find wins early in the season. But I think they're, I think they're on like a three-game winning streak. That's now. right. They are, they've got themselves back to 500. They lost three, won three. Uh, Charlotte and again uh, uh, New Orleans and New Orleans have done the honours there. Um, uh, Okafor, uh, uh, Michael Okafor has got 25 points, 16 rebounds and a career high seven blocks for Charlotte there, but it weren't enough. Yeah, and with Stoyakovic, um, you know, gra grabbing 42 points, uh, you know, you, you just got to wonder, you know, where Michael Jordan's team is going to go next. Exactly right, yes. <laughs> Same way as the Wizards, hopefully not. <laughs> That's right, yeah, he's a good player, though. Um, uh, Minnesota, they are now three and four, but they could, because they've got themselves this little victory away as well. Minnesota, again, uh, you know, perennial underachievers, and they've started the season thus wise as well. And Portland playing some good basketball yeah, at true. the moment. Uh, the guys referred this one here, uh, as, you, as you heard there during the course of the game there. And that's good win for San Antonio. San Antonio would have been absolutely looking to, to nail this one because, of course, <laughs> this, is, this is that derby game. Exactly right. You know, the, 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 you know, everyone knows that Houston are a team that everyone's looking at this year. And, and San Antonio is saying, well, hold on, don't forget us because we've got Timmy back and fit. And not only that, though, San Antonio is showing their supremacy, stopping Houston in their tracks, allowing them only nine points in the fourth quarter. That's good going. Although T-Mac got himself 26, but only five in that second half. So as you say there, that means that the D was stepped up. And of course, as, we, as well, we know that when Sano are really cooking, that D works well as well. In the fourth quarter, big lead for Utah over the Clippers. Very impressive indeed. And we're in the second quarter there, 44-41, Toronto and the Golden State. So do you think we're looking at a couple of the genuine challenges? I know that, that you know, that, that, that they were moved to Chicago and Dallas obviously would be expected to come back this year. It is early. They're clearly not both quite correct yet, but could they it's, be there and thereabouts? It seems like the league's upside down in its head it right is, now. Because yeah. all the teams that you thought would struggle are doing very well. And all the teams that you thought would like bust out of the gates and get, get themselves to quite a few wins under their belt have, have really struggled to get into the groove. So I think we've got to wait for until the end of November. Yeah, right. um, and at the end of November, going into December, we can start seeing teams settle down. And I think you get more of a clearer picture then. You're very wise and very sage. Yeah, and I'm keeping on the fence. I'll rein it in. Exactly right. We'll see you next week for a Corker. Detroit or in Philadelphia. See you then.